because you know I never had it before. Well, that's <laughs> no, the thing because it I asked me if I want to put it on there. I said no. Oh no! Wait. Well, well, we are on now. Welcome back. So we are. What is this now? The Captain America: The First Avenger. Avenger. You know, I like the uh, setup so far. Before we get to the uh, Avengers movie, because we have two Iron Man movies, a Hulk movie, a Thor movie, and one Captain America. So we're setting up like four superheroes, but Iron Man could you have two deals before the Avengers? Yes. Then yeah. which who who knows why that happened? Maybe that's because they they thought they'll just do superhero movies, and then they're like, hey, let's do the Avengers, and let's uh, give everybody one movie. Well, do you think they set it up that way so that way, like I, this I is Iron Man as the more main character in this way? I don't, I don't think they did that to make him. I mean, he became the main character when he was the first movie out. Yeah, but I don't think that's. I don't really think he got two movies to go. Hey, he's the main character. Oh, because okay. I mean, because as you can see, when we go see Avengers, he's not the main character in Avengers. No, it's it's hard to say that. Well, everybody seems movies. to get everybody got equal billing. Yes, I mean. The only people that probably didn't get as 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 much screen time as they probably should is like Hawkeye. Hawkeye's um Black Widow and maybe no Hawkeye. No, he got some main, more. These are, yeah. But he didn't seem to get that much before you got in the movie. I mean, I don't think he was is he was main as main a hero as he should have been. But again, in the comic books, he never really was that big a character. Hmm. But a people, a lot of I mean, he has a lot of fans. I'm one of them. So how did <laughs> I like, uh? When the movie started, it just goes straight into, I guess, present day time, right? When they're in, yeah, where were they? Uh, Canada. Canada. Yeah, somewhere in Canada, somewhere. I love that. Captain America is frozen in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> hey, well, I think it, in a way it's frozen in the ocean. Because I mean, because we know he put the plane down in the ocean. Yeah, he put the plane down in the and ocean. I don't know if it ever said it was they were in Canada, but I th- it had to be somewhere. I mean, he couldn't have got too far from New York because that's where the plane was headed. Yeah, it's was it's the, just really cold up there, somewhere up there, you know. I mean, come on, anywhere up there is cold to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we both are in Texas. Yeah, you're definitely right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't have to go too far for it to be too cold for me. <laughs> so the first thing they showed it was like, you know, the people are talking. They're like, "Hey, it's three o'clock in the morning or whatever." Yeah, and it never really told you what the two two guys from Washington were from. Because remember, the guy goes, "Are you to the YouTube from Washington?" I'm like, oh, no, yeah. <laughs> we're from somewhere else. <laughs> I mean, come on. Well, you know, I guess they would be from Shield, right? Like, is that what well, you thought? Thing, I can't tell if they're from Shield or not, but I'm going to guess that they were, because I know they asked, they wanted to call the Colonel. Yeah. Who do you think the but Colonel they, was? I don't know. That's the thing. Is it Colonel Nick Fury? Was was Nick Fury a Colonel? That's I what I was thinking was. too. When he's like, it's three in the morning. Well, he, this guy has been waiting for a long time. I thought he was referring to. I Nick don't Fury. really think he was. I don't think it was because I mean, Nick Fury is a military man in the comic books, but in the MCU, he doesn't seem to be a military guy. No, he was mainly already from, part of a uh, Shield. Yeah, mainly from. I mean, he probably had a military background because Coulson's supposed to have a military background too. Even though it's never shown in the MCU, it's only. It's only told about in the comic books. Huh. So that's the thing. Because, you know, Nick Fury is actually supposed to be a World War II hero. But in oh, the okay, MCU, yeah. he never fought in World War II. No, because it's, it's too far down the line, right? I mean, like, yeah. Iraq is probably the closest thing time-wise. Yeah, it would have been the closest thing for him. I mean, plus he's an older guy. He could have did the tail end of a lot of other things. I mean, yeah. if he's Special Forces, he would have done any, all kinds of places. Right, so they, they well, we, we, in this MCU, so I'm thinking, never told, it, I'm thinking okay. the two guys were probably just military, some type of military guy, and it was passed on to Shield. Oh, it's passed on to Shield, yeah, because you know they because we him. saw it in because we know that from uh, watching the Hulk. Yeah, you know, because the Hulk was a military matter, but all the uh, special information and stuff was all handled by Shield. Hmm. You know, anytime somebody's when they find people tapping on on the computers or doing communication. It was all Shield, which is supposed to be what Shield's job is, anyways. Right. So I remember we went to the theater to see this, right? Because yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Remember, because remember, well, we we watched almost all the Marvel movies together. We did from, from Iron Man. I mean, I don't know. I guess the last of them, like In Game and uh, Infinity War, we didn't see together. But... No, we didn't, because we were already like, you know, when he moved apart, you know. Yeah. 
But I remember we went and saw that because remember every movie, pretty much every movie up to Captain America, we'd all, me, you, Cody, we'd all stand in line and we'd debate who's going to be Captain America. Yeah, I do. I still, you know, I still stand to that we watch man. We watch every movie we watch is like, who's going to be Captain America? Yep. Who's going to be Captain always, America? It was always, it was never Chris Evans. We never even mentioned Chris Evans' name. No, because sure. like about at that time he already played a superhero. He was already the yeah, well, torch. and he still wasn't a major, well-known actor either. You know? No. No, I mean he never did it. Like we're too busy talking about either Matthew McConaughey or Brad Pitt. Or... <laughs> oh, I remember Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. Which I like Matthew McConaughey, but he wouldn't have been Captain America. I don't think. He's a very Captain Texan, or you know, Captain Texan. Yeah. Anyway. He wouldn't have made a good. It would have been a weird Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> He would have to um, speak with a more American New York East Coast accent. Yeah, and I'm, who knows, maybe he could have pulled it off. He could. Brad Pitt, I, Brad Pitt, I don't know. I mean, he could have. He's got that American. But yeah. He's got that Southern thing, too. He does, yeah. So, so I, mean, I don't remember who all the other people that we named. No, well, I know at that time, I remember we think they were obviously looking for someone who, who was over like at least six feet to play Captain America, right? Because yeah. Captain America's like well, I think six two, six three from the yeah. But uh, from what I was reading though, they wanted Chris Evans, you know, because he yeah. didn't even uh, have to audition. No, they wanted it, and he said no too. Like he didn't yeah, want to play the character. No. Well, yeah, he had I a bad really experience from you know Fantastic Four. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Hey, but you know what? We talked about that before. Like all the uh, like um, Marvel movies have. A lot of them is a letdown instead of like you know when before Disney took well, over. Yeah, we keep saying that they're a letdown, but that's the thing. At the time they came out, do you remember them being a letdown? Because when I watched Fantastic Four, I don't remember coming out of theater thinking it was a letdown. No, it was good. It was exactly what I, I mean. Was. A lot of those movies. Cause I know everybody. Oh. Like, there's some people didn't like it. Yeah, that's fine. But I mean, I think if you're really a Marvel a fan, you left those theaters thinking they're good. I mean, because I remember like Daredevil. I I left the theater thinking it was good. Of course, a lot of other people were like, "Oh, this is so horrible." I was like, I, "What are you talking about?" Compared to I what? I never saw that in the theater. I don't think I've seen it until it was on DVD. Yeah, I know. I went and saw it, yeah. and then I saw the only one I saw I didn't really like. It was a letdown to me. Well, I mean, there was other ones, but I mean, during that time period, yeah, was the second Fantastic Four. Oh, the Rise of Silver Surfer. Yeah, that I remember that one wasn't very good. Yeah, one wasn't very good because, like, the um, the most disappointing thing was Galactus. Oh, like he was at niggas. some kind of <laughs> storm or whatever. I, I I don't think they actually call it Galactus, right? But like we just thought I'm it sure was. And, they called him Galactus. And I remember talking about at that time, like, hey, you know what? They probably didn't have the budget to make a Galactus. That's why, well, like, I mean, hey, you know what he's gonna do? This Trista thing will do. Nobody really has that budget to make a Galactus yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, Disney now probably. But yeah, like, maybe. You know, they had, they made the Watcher from Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, part, uh, Volume Two. That's who yeah. Stan Lee was talking to. So, well, let's get back to Captain America. So, after they had the beach, uh, in intro scene, they went back to 1941, yeah. 1942. Yeah, we see uh, Steve Rogers trying to enlist in the military. Yep, that was which, the one, with the newspaper. Which, which I was like, huh, that's, uh, that's Chris Evans? <laughs> so, the first they time did a I really saw good job making him skinny. That was amazing. Like, that was I mean, amazing. He put his head in the... A tiny little body, <laughs> but yeah. the head is not too big for that smaller body. It just a yeah, good they made size. Him, they made him a little runt. So, yeah. And, yeah, they make him a little runt, and I was thinking, like, <laughs> I guess at that time, right, that was the um, appropriate time to have that kind of special effect. If they could have, if they did this like two or three years earlier, there was no way. Yeah, but also you knew because you before we went and saw the movie, we knew it's Chris Evans, or yes. we knew who was playing it. Did you know who he was? Oh, yeah, I knew who it was, yeah. Okay, because, I, I mean, was. when I went and saw it, I didn't really know who he was. It was just like, oh, this is the guy that played The Flash, and he's also the guy that was in Not Another Teen Movie. Is it Not Another Teen Movie, or Seuss All That? I always get those confused. No, it's Not Another Teen Movie, because Not Another Teen Movie makes fun of Seuss All That, too. Yes, I think that's why. Because it's almost the same movie. Is. It's almost the same movie. <laughs> yes, it's that. Uh, yeah, I know, yeah. Chris Evans, I... Uh, I don't think I knew him from not another teen movie because I don't think I've seen that until later. But I oh, only nah. knew him from uh, Fantastic Four. Yeah, well, I only knew that from those two movies. Before no. that, I never even heard the guy. He played a great um, Captain America. He did play. He was excellent in Captain yep. America. But we didn't know that until we saw the theater. I mean, yeah, I just... guess I didn't. I don't remember having any thoughts about, oh, this is going to be bad or this is going to be good. 
Yeah, I didn't know how it was. But, well, well, I based my experience on the 1990 Captain America. And oh. I'm like, how? Because it looks kind of lame. So I'm like, well, I hope they did make this a lot better. And they did. They, they, they I guess, I, I, had, I, guess I, was, I was figured it would be pretty good. Because, I mean, the two Cap, two Iron Mans were good. And so was Thor. You was know, good. Uh, Thor. So, yeah. I mean, I didn't go into the theater going, oh, this, gonna, this may not be good. No, I think by the time we hit Iron Man 2, everything was already good. Like, there was no letdown. Since yeah, everything was getting better. Even I mean, Thor was good. Like the conversation, yeah. even, they even have lines in this movie that I thought was very funny. You know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This one did. And they did know. the time like very appropriately. Like this is how they spoke back then. You know, Steve was really well mannered. Well, yeah. They, they, yeah. Like you said, this was 1940s. It's, yep. it's 1941. Well, I think it's 1942. Yeah. Because I mean, the United States ends the war 19 uh, December 1941. So this is somewhere in 1942. Yep. And he's trying to every. I mean, like we already. We he goes to the doctor. He gets rejected. Rejected. Four F, which means you can't do anything. I like. I like that we know the background of how his parents die. You know, mustard gas and uh. Doctor yeah, because he. Yeah, he, he names it because up to that point, I never even knew how his parents died. Yeah, yeah. I mean. I like the background, like where the doctor asked to make sure, like, well, maybe his pants out of natural causes, so I don't want to <laughs> <laughs> let this guy in. But you can see the list, like, where he already have all these kind of conditions, you know? Yeah, I like it because he goes, why don't you let me, why don't you let me do something? He goes, yeah, I'm saving your life. Yeah, <laughs> and then he failed him. <laughs> yeah, he fails him. But the neat thing is, you know, and then what's he? He's at the theater. Yeah, this is the, where we uh, get fair, to, right? This is where we get to see his character type of character. Not the fair. He's at the theater. Remember, oh, he's at the movie yes. theater. He got rejected. And in, he went to the in theater. Front of, yeah. yeah, in front of each movie, you know, that's where you got your news back in the day. Yeah, the, you got to remember, news only the whatever. very rich had TV. Yes. And during that time, I think you only had like maybe two shows. And the rest oh, of it yeah. was static. Yeah, so you you went and watched a TV show at the same same time. So it really didn't do you any good to own a TV. So. Yeah. Because if you're really rich, all you can go is go, hey, I got TV. And I got a TV. Like, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, and they'd be like, what is that? It's not the equivalent to that. It's like, I have an iMac computer to do what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah what are you going to do with that? <laughs> I mean, it's like having this yeah. spaceship right now and going, and, and people going, where are you going to go with it? Yeah, you know, like they went to the theater to watch cartoons. That was a thing. Because the, the, like, they were, when they were playing well, the news of the war, yeah, like, cartoons, the guy was, uh, the a hole was, um, Hey, um, stop the cartoons. Who cares, you know? Oh, did he say cartoons? He did say call cartoons. I thought he said just start the movie already. And if you notice, I say a ho. I'm trying to keep this one clean because it's Captain America. He doesn't swear <laughs> until like Endgame, I believe. <laughs> well, let me put it this way. Uh, I'm thinking the guys over there fighting overseas. They didn't have a problem swearing. No, no, and not in the uh, which, military. It strikes me as weird because you know, I uh, mean, if Captain America fought overseas. That's where he learned all his language. Yeah, it is like, man, that's a lot of people swearing over here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. You've seen Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, you know what? I was going to point out that that bully, right? Like, that he, um, you know, they had to take this outside. That's not the same guy, right? That was later when he got enlisted. I thought it looked the same. I don't same. think it was. I don't think it's the same actor. Okay, good. I don't okay, remember good. it being the same it's just guy. just a I random mean, bully. It could have been, and that would have made a good story, but I really don't think it was. I don't see what, because the other guy was, what was his name, Gilmore Hodge? I don't think we see him until boot camp. Oh, okay, good. That's what I thought, too. So, yeah, I mean, mainly it's just wanted to show you, because he starts beating the crap out of Steve Rogers. Yeah. Of course, Steve Keep Rogers, because here's the thing, you know Steve Rogers, you know, you. I mean, if somebody, you get in a fight at a theater, you don't have to go outside with that person. <laughs> it doesn't really work that way. I mean, so he volunteered to go outside in the alleyway with that guy, so he yeah, can get punched. Right. It proves I mean, his point later. Yeah, because it's the proof that he doesn't back down for bullies. Yeah, he doesn't back down for bullies, yep. Yeah, I mean, I hopefully that guy didn't call him chicken and, and say, hey, come on into the alley, because, I mean, we, we had a, a Marty McFry moment. Like back to, I know I was going to say back yeah. to the future, <laughs> Mark, chicken. But, I mean, the guy, he went in there, and he's like you said, I could do this all day. Yeah, which I is, could do this all day, yep. Which is going to be mentioned in almost all of Captain yeah. America's movies. This is his. His line. This is his line. I can do this all yeah, day. He's all day. Of course, he's getting beat down. I love that line. Day. Yeah, he's getting beat down all day. And then this is where we see his friend, Bucky. Yeah, I thought it was really random. Like, Bucky knows you will find him in an alley. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was kind of weird, too. But apparently, <laughs> maybe he was supposed to meet Bucky. At yeah, probably because point. he wanted to meet Bucky in the theater. Yeah. You know, or Bucky just knows, knows that uh, if I go around these islands, all these uh, alleyways in Brooklyn. Is it, is it Brooklyn, right? Yes, yeah, Brooklyn. Bronx. In the Bronx. <laughs> I'm going to find him. <laughs> 
He's gonna offer to fight him getting his butt kicked. <laughs> no, I think they just didn't touch on that because they were gonna meet up because they just say like, you know, I gotta get you cleaned up, and he's like, to go where to to the future. Yeah, to the future, which yep. they go to the uh, World's Fair. The World's Fair, yes. The which fair. is funny cause, thing is because the real world, there was supposed to be a World's Fair during Yeah, you world told fair. me about that in Iron Man but 2. It, well, but no, yeah, I told you on Iron Man 2 that was the World Fair. The Iron Man World Fair that we saw was supposed to be based on the 60s World Fair. Oh, okay. There was a World Fair in the 30s, too. So, so there's not like a World Fair that just slowly transitioned into a stock expo, right? Yeah. Yeah, they. I mean, they're using the Stark Expo. I'm going to say that the World Fair we're seeing in Captain America turns into the Stark Expo, even though this is. I don't believe that. I heard people go, "Oh, this is a Stark Stark uh, Stark Expo," but this isn't. This is just a World Fair. Well, that's what I thought too. It's, the first time the, I saw the, it. But here's the thing about the World Fair, the like there was a World Fair in the 30s too, Flushing's, you know, Flushing, New York. Mm -hmm. There was one in uh, during the 60s. There was supposed to be one during World War II. There was no World Fair during World War II because we we're busy fighting a war. Also, oh, this is like um, uh, early 1942 then, right? I'm just yeah, this guessing. is 1940, early 1942, and there wasn't a World's Fair because of the war effort. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah, because more I mean, men are enlisted. To fight. Yeah, everybody's enlisted, plus all the equipment and all the weaponry and all that stuff, all that metal they need to make the World's Fair, they need that for the war. Hmm. So there's why that's why there wasn't a World's Fair. I mean, most of the Olympics got ended, too. Well, maybe you know, that was the beginning of it. Yeah, I mean, the, I don't know. The, but I'm just saying, there was supposed to be a World's Fair, and there wasn't one. Oh, but in okay. the movie, there is one. Yeah, that might be the last one until, you know, 1946 or something. <laughs> yeah, well, sure. It, uh, the next one would be in the 60s. Yeah. Oh, okay, in the 60s. Yeah, they had I think there was supposed to be some more, time. but the problem is Europe was destroyed. Because, see, the World's Fair moves around from countries. Different countries host it. Oh, okay. And the other ones would have been overseas in Europe, where you really don't want to do the World's Fair in Europe because you're going to get shot by the Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> yes, at that time, definitely, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, but we do, we get to see the World Fair. And the neat thing I want to point out is, you know, in this movie, because it's showing the backdrop of New York in the 1940s, mm -hmm. it reminded me a lot of uh, The Rocketeer. Oh, that's right. Which this movie is directed by Joe Johnson, who directed The Rocketeer. Oh, you know what? The visuals look uh, very similar. Even though I never saw, um, I never seen Rocketeer before, but like I remember the trailers. It yeah. does look well, also um, did, very uh, similar to that. He also did October Sky. He does a lot of 1940s, 30s type movies. Well, maybe He's he really good at look. that. Well, it's not just that. I mean, a lot of people don't know who Joe Johnson is. If you love Star Wars, you love Joe Johnson. Let's put it that way. Because oh. he's the art director for Empire Strikes Back. He's the guy that did most of the artwork. Him and Ralph McQuarrie. They created Yoda, Boba Fett. They look at the, they help do a lot of work on all, most of the spaceships that you see. Really? Yeah, Joe Johnson did most of the work. He also worked on Indiana. He worked for ILM. He also did most of Indiana Jones. Did a lot oh. of work on Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Last Watch. Because that's, by the way, because you mentioned, you know, there's a scene where uh, the Red Skull's talking about Hitler's always looking out in the desert for little trinkets. Yes. That's a reference to Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, you know what? We skipped that whole scene because, like, when they go back in time, they didn't go to Captain America first. They went to that part in was it Italy? Yeah. No, Wait, it was, the Tesseract. No, it's in Nonsberg. Was it Nonsberg? Normandy? Not Normandy. Norway. Yes, right. Yeah. Norway. 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 Yeah. I Which I actually think it's, I think it's actually the same town that they show in uh, Thor. Remember when they travel back in time to fight a battle in Thor? What did they? Was that the same place? I think it is. I don't I'm know. Gonna it I'm gonna say it is. It's the same place. In both movies. Because, you know, last time when we talk about Thor, right, we talk about, you know, like, they, they got the Tesseract, and then now we got to figure out where that came from. And yeah. it came from Captain America. So now yeah, I don't it's in the know Yeah, it's featured where? in the Captain America movie. But it's in Norway. It's in Norway. Yeah, which I don't think during World War II, the Nazis actually ever invaded Norway. Well, that's why this is the first time we saw Hydra. They yeah, this is when we said Hydra, you know, because we see a guy running in and go, hey, they're going to come take something. We don't yeah. know what they're going to take. I mean, if you watched... Thor, you pretty much got an idea of what they're coming to yeah. take. And it's so weird that they don't make the connection, like, well, how did the Tesseract, like, um, got there? So, well, they actually did Nervous Hell, but I'm going to oh. think this, I'm going to think it's from Thor, because, okay, in the movie in Thor, if they're the same town, we see uh, Odin arrive to fight all the, uh, the, the uh, Icemen. Okay. You know, he went to fight the pros. Maybe he left the Tesseract there. Oh, I never made that connection. 
I would think that during their battle, he must have left the Tesseract there. And the humans who worship the Asgardians decided to keep it, you know? And of course, they hide it in the they hide it in the wall. In the wall is the uh, tree of life. The tree of life, the, yes. That we see reference in Thor again. Yep. Of course, Smith, Hugo Weaving. His name is Smith, which, yes. is, by the way, I don't know if you caught this, but Smith is like Smith. Yes, yeah, so from uh, Matrix. Yeah, Agent yeah. Smith <laughs> figures okay, out totally. where it's at really easily. He just goes over there and he pushes a button and it pops out, and he's like, yep. huh. And of course, the guy said, "Hey, men shouldn't look at that." And he's like, "I'm not an ordinary." Basically, yeah, not ordinary, not ordinary man. Because he's like man, looking you know. at this, like you know, John Travolta from Pulp Fiction, right there. Yeah, we have this. <laughs> yeah, we got this. Yeah. <laughs> and um, that, like when he took him, you know, they gave the order like, "Hey, to kill everybody and whatnot." And the guy's like, "No, you can't. You will burn." And he make that cool ass line like, "Yeah, I only have," and he rub his face. <laughs> it's not so cheesy. Right? It was kind of cheesy. Yeah, he like he rub his face and then like <laughs> like, like, like the cheekbone right. And there. the thing is, if you don't know anything about the movie, you don't even know what he's talking. Yeah, about. Yeah, you don't know what he's talking about because you already know that he's a red skull. Yeah, you won't know about it until half the halfway into the movie. Yes, and then it's like, yeah, oh, plus, I totally get it plus, now. Plus, you notice they got that tank. You see that tank? Look how big that tank was. Yes. Oh. Do you really need a tank that big against defenseless people? <laughs> Hey man, the bigger the better. It's it's better to bring it than not bring it. Okay, that's the that's the whole thought process. Okay. It's hey, do you want to bring, bring a gun? Have, huh? Should we just bring a machine gun? Like, no, we need to bring the tank. For, yeah, should we bring a regular size tank? For, now let's bring the biggest tank. For people who can defend themselves, hey, you never know. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna use a tesseract against us. Oh, yeah, yeah, you don't know. I don't know what. what I don't know. What I mean, yeah, you don't know. Maybe there was an ass guardian hidden in there. Yeah. <laughs> We touch on that scene, and I think that's the when he shot that old dude. I guess I don't know who he's yeah. or whatever. That's shot the old dude. The of course, the blood gets on his hydra head. Yeah. So we know that. Which I was like, huh, that looks kind of forced to. It's like putting yeah. ketchup on a French fry. Yeah, it feels like the opposite of the shield sim- emblem. You know, like that that the octopus. Is it an octopus? What is that? No, it's a hydra. Oh yeah, but a what hydra. is the symbol of? Like I know it's hydra. Is it like a, some kind of octopus? No, it's a Hydra. A Hydra has lots of tentacles. Oh, okay. I, yeah, that is a Hydra. I totally I mean, of course it I, has a skull head. I mean, it has a skull head on it, but the tentacles is not the octopus. It's a Hydra. Skull head to what that is. Okay. Yeah, I there is a Hydra. Sure. That's yes. that's what a Hydra is. You cut parts of the Hydra off, and more and, uh, parts grow back. Skull. Yeah. So, that's the thing. That was a Hydra. This is not an octopus. That's a Hydra. Ah, uh, it looked like so an this, octopus. That's too. why they call themselves Hydra, not octopus. <laughs> I thought Hydra stood for something like, you know, H Y, you know, D R A. No, no, like it's a Hydra. Or, okay. Yeah, no, there's a thing called a Hydra. That's that's what it is. Okay. Yeah, it's not called the octopus. Which would be dumb to call the octopus. <laughs> then we'd be then we'd be talking about the gut or oh, what is it? Shit what was that? That movie with the octopus in it. Maybe you haven't seen that one. The sh- no. It's not the shadow. What was it? The spirit, sorry. The spirit, oh, I haven't seen that. Yeah. We'll, we'll have to talk about it. It wasn't Good. that crazy. It's on the list. <laughs> okay, it's on the list now. Definitely. All right, so we go back to Captain America, and then they go yeah. to the fair. And then they go to the, world fair. the first time we saw how it stopped, and then you wanted to point it out something. Yeah, also, we also see the uh, one of the girls that they're going to go dancing with is uh, yes. Jenna Coleman, who's in Doctor Who. Oh, okay. Doctor Who, I mean, come on, everybody's, a, well, you're not a fan of Doctor Who, are you? Well, I wouldn't say I'm not a fan, i just never seen Doctor Who. Okay, you need to see it, then you'll be a fan. I'm pre- yeah, I'm pretty sure I will. Uh, yeah, I need to bring you over to the other side. It's a little, it's kind of hokey. I mean, I guess by it's American funny. standards. In England, it's probably like, oh, this is top technology. But <laughs> oh. standards, but I love the movie. It's gonna, it's just, it's, I mean, the TV show, sorry, I shouldn't say the movie. The TV Which show. girl, is it the blonde, or is it the one that Bucky was with? Oh, it's the one with Bucky was with. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not the girl that didn't want anything to do with Steve Rogers. I know, right? Because she's short you and see, stuff. You can see how disgusted she was. Yeah, it, like when he offered her popcorn. Or see, something, that, right? in that scene, I could, I, I, I could feel how uh, Steve Rogers felt. <laughs> like, uh, that's my whole life right there. <laughs> but I didn't have a super soldier serum. But he didn't have it then either. He was like five, Yeah, but eventually he got it, and then he has, he, and then he gets it, and he has all these women wanting to touch his chest. I know, huh? <laughs> well, we were jumping way too far, so... It's okay. We're time they, jumping. They show the flying car. Yeah, we see the... Well, before we get there, though, yes. they walk past a synthetic man. Did yes. you see that? It names the, the scientist that builds him. He's, he's stuck in a glass tube, and the thing in the comic books 
he appeared in the uh, the first comic book the he appears in is called Marvel Comics. Marvel Comics. Because you got to think they're not called Marvel Comics yet. Even when Captain America came out, they're called uh, I think the publisher was called Fox, but the comic books is called Timely. It's called Timely Comics. Timely Comics. Oh, okay. Yeah, they don't become Marvel until later on. They're like kind of like DC Comics. They take the name of one of their comic books because Marvel Comics was the comic book. Now they're called Marvel Comics. Same thing with uh, DC Comics. They weren't DC to begin with. They took the name of Detective Comics. Detective Comics, yeah, I knew that. But I didn't know Marvel so, wasn't called Marvel. Like, right off no, the they were never always called Marvel. Oh, that's I don't know when they took the Marvel name. Later on in the 50s, maybe? I, I could be wrong. But I was pretty sure that the story I read that when they did Captain America, and we also got to point out that uh, this this movie has an appearance by uh, Stan Lee, but Stan yes. Lee didn't create ta- Captain America. Oh, okay. Captain America's been around. He, he got his job writing stories on Captain America. Oh, so there was like, um, something that he yeah. just got hired on as a writer. Yeah, because this has already been, yeah, Marvel Comics comes along around with Stan Lee's era. Stan Lee may have something to do with it becoming Marvel Comics. Oh, so it sounds like Stan Lee was just, you know, high on as a writer, and then they asked him, like, hey, you know, can you create more stuff? And that's when he started, you know, snowboarding yeah, down the there. 60, well, during the 60s is when he can't, he made Marvel Comics what it is. Oh. Because you got to think, before this, I mean, before this, you had Captain America, and then they started making romance comics. After the, after the war ends, Captain America pretty much disappears. They tried to bring him back during the 50s, but he's not very popular. No, because the During war the 50s, was already over. Yeah, yeah, the war is over, and the problem is he just got kicked to the sidelines. Captain America did because people lost interest in him. I mean, he was only created for the war. Yeah, Captain America was created sense. in the comics for the war because everybody's doing it. Even Batman fought in World War II during the, his comic book. Wow. Too. Superman was the was like a thing against the Nazis, you know, because he was a super Superman. But anyhow. I mean, mainly during that time, the period after the war, they just did monster comic books, Western comic books, romance comic books. And somewhere, Stan Lee decided, hey, let's do superheroes again. And then he created the universe that we watch now. Yeah, I'm so happy that happened then. Yeah, I'm so happy. So pretty much everything we're watching is the 60s. Oh, okay. So so the neat thing is we see the synthetic man, which is just neat because he eventually, if oxygen gets introduced in the tube his skin catches on fire and he becomes he's an android and he becomes the human torch wow which is actually kind of a nod to uh the oh, fact chris that evans chris evans with yes the human torch in fantastic four with those two torches the human torches are not the same so they made that scene for you yes they made it for us yeah, they made it for us. They really. made it for us, yeah. Because if I, Cause I mean, when I saw when I saw the synthetic man at the theater, I was all happy. <laughs> oh, because it's Chris Evans. <laughs> no, I was no, I was the sad thing. I wasn't happy because it was Chris Evans. I was happy because I'm like, oh, that's the Human Torch from the Invaders. Oh, okay. Not the yeah. Not was the Fantastic the Four, okay. Yeah, it wasn't the Fantastic Four. Yeah, the Fantastic Four Human Torch is named after him because he takes on the same powers. See, they would have known of the Human Human Torch. Oh. But the Human Torch fought the Nazis. So that was a great Easter egg. Yes, it was a, a, a humongous Easter egg. Whoa. Because in the comic books, there was a story that made that that uh, Ultron uses, finds that Human Torch's body, that Human Torch, the synthetic man still, and made vision from him. Oh, wow. But he doesn't actually. Later on, they explained it. It was just a clone of that android that he made vision from. So the the human torch still lives. So the way I'm seeing it is this human torch yeah. exists in the Marvel universe now. Oh, he could have his own store. We don't know about it because you got to think. Also, another superhero that we don't talk about that's created during this time of that human torch yeah. is the Phantom from the 1930s. The Phantom, huh? And there's a movie for this. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, the Phantom. He's also an MCU character. Oh, I didn't know I don't it was know an if, MCU character. I didn't know. No, I don't know if we could call him MCU. He's a Marvel character. He's a Marvel still. character, not in, not in this MCU. But yeah. maybe he is an MCU character. But okay. Yeah, yeah. Then also we also see now. Then that's when we get to see Howard Stark. Yes, Tony Stark's a, a young Howard Stark. Which we can tell by this movie, Howard Stark resembles a lot of uh, Howard Hughes. Yes. How old do you think? There's a young Howard Stark, right? Like, I could, yeah, this is gonna be a tell. very like, young Howard like Stark. Like twenty, so it's already like twenty I'm something. Go, yeah, I'm gonna say twenty something. I yeah. mean, I don't know how old the actor is playing him, Don Dominic, whatever his name. Yeah, is. yeah. 
I don't know how old he was, but we're going to say he's in his 20s. Yeah, I think it was like really young. I, house I mean, he would have to be because, you know, he, I don't, he didn't seem too old to me by the time we get to the 80s. No, yeah, yeah, to the 80s. Yep, that's when. You know, remember, we get, to see him, we get to see him in Ant-Man. Yep. During the 80s. And then we also get to see his, his demise later on, too. Wow, so he's in his 20s, and he's already like a weapons uh, contractor for the well, military. He's, he's a genius. Yeah, he's a genius. He's a genius, yeah. I mean, I guess he could he even said that in the... Um, I don't you know. I don't know, because I don't want to do all the... I don't like to do all the math. Maybe he's in his 30s. I mean, but he's got to be at a certain age where he's not way too old by the time he gets... No, it's just because he's the smartest man at the Yeah, because I mean, because yeah. Tony Stark's supposed to exist, what, be a, a kid during... A youngster, what, in his, what? The 80s? Teens during the 80s. Yeah. So it'd, it'd be weird him being from World right, War II. Right, they use the same actor to play his father from yeah, Civil War. Exactly, uh, and, uh, and that's the thing. I wouldn't wouldn't most people's kids have been fought in the Vietnam War instead of. Yep. No, he's but a young house stock then. Yep. But I'd say he's very young. Plus, we get to see his flying car take yeah, off. Flying car. He just said a few years. Cool. I like that. He's very slick. Yeah, the flying car, which you see, it, it fails, and he yeah, kind of giggles a little bit. He laughs a little bit, and then he's like. uh Hey, you know what? Even though it's a few years, right? He brought it to that fair. It's like very impressive when they show that he can even do you're, that. You're so neat in a way. Yeah, it's very neat. Remember when uh, Ian Musk unveils the uh, the cyber truck? The cyber truck, yeah. Remember they bust out a windshield and it wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah, the bulletproof glass. Yeah. <laughs> Funny how and that and I mean it's just kind of weird that that happened the same as this, but this movie's this movie happened before that event. Yeah, it did, right? <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> But anyhow, we see that. It's real. <laughs> so we're introduced to Howard Hughes, so we know he's a genius. He's That's a genius. Just, that was the whole point of the showing us the flying car is he's a genius. He's a, he could make a flying car in the 40s. Yes. And well, before and he even thing. showed a flying car, I like how he kissed that hostess. Yeah. <laughs> That's very Well, he knew all their names, too, because, you know, the other one walks by and he knew her name. I'm yeah. like, <laughs> That's Howard Hughes. Yep. And plus, we get to see the same actor play Howard Hughes if you watch Agent Carter. You mean Howard Stark? Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Howard Stark. Oh, the same guy. actor in Agent Carter. Okay, so they yeah. play by... by his but here's the neat thing about the flying car. You also see the flying car in Agent Carter. Ooh. But here's the neat thing. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Agent Coulson has a flying Corvette, which is Stark technology. Wow, so they have flying So cars. basically, so this flying car... Range. Apparently, this flying car works, and S.H.I.E.L.D. gets it. They get you try out all the uh, cool prototypes. Well, it's weird that it'd be a prototype for, like, since World War II all the way up to the 2000s. Hey, come on. No, it's, it's been 50 years. This got to be working by now, right? <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. It's working by now. Why Why doesn't everybody have one in the Marvel Universe? Hey, it's, it's kind of expensive, all right? We can just let civilian use, like, billion-dollar technology yeah, okay, on the street, yeah. okay? That just makes you wonder about the real world. Where are they hiding this stuff from us? <sighs> You know Homeland what? Security, his Homeland Security got all kinds of awesome toys. They had GPS, really remember? They had GPS in the military for a long time until Clinton. Yeah. Was it and Clinton? Not, yeah. yeah. They've had GPS for a while, but it's not that impressive. <laughs> no, but like, you know, at that time, like, what? The global positioning system? That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy, but still, it makes you a lot more go the wrong direction. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so we move on from that scene, and then this is when he's trying to enlist again. Yeah, well, that's when he. Well, I guess you know he's he's. Well, I mean, he's not going to go dancing with that girl, obviously. No, because he already know that he's not getting the good fire from so her. He, you know. So he looks over there and he sees the, the military is enlisting. So that's where he goes. I'm just going to go do it again for yeah. like what the fifth. The time? fifth time, you know. He's like, what are you going to go Whatever Ohio? time it was. <laughs> yeah. Because remember when he saw his papers, he said, "Oh, New Jersey? You kidding me?" <laughs> yeah, oh, I know because they're from New York. I love that joke. Like, dude, just are you kidding me? So that New York, New Jersey thing has been around for a long time. Okay, they even did that on um, what's that show? Um, How I Met Your Mother. Oh yeah, like, hey, oh, yeah, I remember. I'm not like, dating Jersey, anybody from New Jersey. Yeah, just, he's not dating anyone from New Jersey. <laughs> New Jersey. <laughs> I'm thinking the whole country's mainly like that. Yeah, <laughs> we're just getting trapped in New Jersey. I don't even understand it, you know. I only lived in New York for three years, but you didn't understand it. Didn't you? Yeah. Didn't you see some of the? You even met some of the people from New Jersey? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know what? I uh, at my current job, there's there's a client from New Jersey. Yeah, yeah, I totally okay. see it. You know, <laughs> totally. These are New Yorkers. I mean, when until you meet people from New Jersey, like, well, this is they're jerks, man. I'm pretty sure not everybody <laughs> are jerks, okay? 
sorry for anyone from New Jersey listening to this. You're not a jerk, okay? No, you're I'm not sorry because, see, they don't understand what you're saying now. They never heard anybody say I'm sorry because <laughs> they don't say I'm sorry. Just go on I mean, day. Yeah, they'll just walk in front of you in line. I mean, they're from New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> that stereotype, man. I don't yeah, it, but I mean, if anybody from Boston, America, right? but if anybody from Boston is insulted because uh, they're oh, supposed to be bigger way. jerks, that's bigger different. jerks than people from New Jersey, I'm sorry, New Jersey <laughs> takes it. <laughs> but hey, just, they don't have a beer named after them, okay? It was a really good quick scene though when uh, Bucky got all upset about like Jersey, really. <laughs> like, hey, I'm trying. You know what? There's 50 states. I can have 50 tries, okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and well, some of them were barely new, but, but <laughs> during that time. So, well, that's where him and Bucky have the conversation about, you yeah, know, just men fighting. And, and we see and the uh, professor, that and that's where the professor over, overhears it. Yes. Do you and think the professor important. was already looking for Steve at that time, or did he just come across? I think he, well, I don't think he was, I don't know if he's looking for him. I'm, I'm, I think he was just looking for a certain type of person. Yeah, certain type of person. Because you got to think that the professor already injected, and it doesn't tell us yet, but we already know that. Yeah. He lived in Germany. He injected the Red Skull. Yep. It wasn't even will. though at that time wasn't ready. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't completely ready. Ready, and he already knew what the, the serum does. The serum makes you more whatever you are. Yep. Which actually we've already seen that in another movie, The Hulk. The Hulk, yeah. Yes. Remember uh, what's his name? Yep. The uh, Abomination. The guy that plays the bomb, who yes. is the bomb issue, he gets injected it and it makes him more of exactly what he like does ten times your whatever your personality is. Yeah, everything. well, I mean, the, yeah, the guy wanted to help the hunt the Hulk. He got injected with it. Now he just wanted to kill the Hulk. Yeah, so, kill the so, Hulk. You know, this guy, this guy's looking for a certain type of guy, and I'm sure he kind of overheard that this guy just keeps trying to apply for applications and he's not making it. Yeah, but he also sees. This guy, he's a little guy. He's a little guy that keeps trying. But he, the problem is, I'm thinking he could looking at him. He, this guy has a bigger heart than anybody. Yeah, just I mean, from that conversation, yeah. I mean, come on. Even at this time, I'm thinking he could lift his Thor's hammer. But, ooh, that's the thing. He always you know? put others before himself. Always did. Always did, yes. Well, that's because he had nothing. I mean, the guy had nothing, but he had nothing. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, he just wanted, he, like he said. I he highly like agree. Food. As soon as, you know what? I think Steve Rogers, his whole life, he could have lived up, up uh, Mjolnir. Yes, he could have been. Because he was he was worthy of anywhere in the universe. Yep. He's, yeah, he's worthy. The whole time, his whole entire but life, Steve Rogers is worthy. But, yeah, we see him going to the doctor and, think he, and it makes it look like he's about to, he thinks he's about to get arrested. <laughs> And then that's when the professor comes they, in. And they show first, that thing where, like, when the nurse came into the doctor, yeah. like, they say something. over his shoulder. They leave, like, is everything okay? Then he look at that side. Stay here. Yeah, stay here. <laughs> Just stay here. And then the MP comes in. And the MP comes in. It's so funny. He's like, uh, oh, they're putting okay? my shoes off. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, the first the thing, the professor comes in, in yeah. and he's like, do you want to go overseas and, and kill Nazis? Yeah. You he go says, kill season. Nazis. Yeah, he he's did. Like, he said, kill me? Nazis. I like it. I like it. Ask, he asked him, where, where are you from? He goes, that was cause, yeah, because his, uh, his accent, he's like, I'm from New York, you know, and then like before that, Germany. Like, got a problem? No. <laughs> no no problem with that. But I like it again. He goes, because uh, he also asked, this is another thing I noticed uh, Steve Rogers asked a lot. He goes, you want to kill Nazis? He goes, is this a test? He asked yeah. us again. And he's like, yes, this is yeah, a test. This is a test. And then, then of course, he, just told, hear, he basically yeah. told him the truth. Yeah, he told well. He told him how he really felt. Yeah, he don't kill anybody. He just wants. He just, he just, he just, he's a bully. He wants to. Just he doesn't like bullies. Yeah, he doesn't like, like that. And the thing is, what we get from him because he even tells it to Agent Carter why he wants. Because we get more of the story when he's sitting in the car with Agent Carter later. On. Yes. But yeah, anyhow, when before the experiment. Yeah. Of course, you know the professor's like, yeah, maybe we should get the little guy this time. We have lots of big men. Yep. We should get the we should get the, the little, little guy, guy try this time. Yep. No, that was so really gets, good. I like that scene. So a lot. he gets thrown in the uh, the program. What was that? SSR. Yes. Secret. Yeah, I think it's SSR. Secret Super Soldier, or whatever. Super Soldier, or whatever. Well, it was a secret. It was a Secret Soldier program. Yeah. And it's run by Colonel Phillips. Oh, Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones. It's great. He has some, some of the funny. Fun yes, he has some of the greatest lines. Which to me, the be, his his best movie still loans and dub. But, Oh yeah, it's because you know you're from Texas, right? That's oh, why. you kind of got you gotta gotta read that. I mean, that's it's it's this part of this area. 
yes, important in this part of their state. But I mean, he was in uh, Men in Black too. Yes, he in Men in Black. He's in a lot of great movies. Okay, he was in a lot of great. Well, he was also in Batman or Forever. Well, that's different. Oh, that's why he was in Batman Forever. He so he was in a superhero movie. Yeah, he was in Two Face. He did a good job. And I mean, I mean he's he played good, good guys and he's played bad. A lot yes. of good I mean, U.S. Marshals. And we just also have Robert Dowdy Jr. Yeah, it's got Robert Dowdy Jr. portraying him in Blade. And Rusty Snipes playing Blade. He portrayed both of those guys. So this Iron Man, Blade, and <laughs> in Captain and, America? And, or Agent K. <laughs> Agent K, that's a, but it's Marvel Comics now, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, well, if you say it Marvel Comics, you want to do it that way. Yeah, I want to say it that way. Okay, we're gonna go with that way. It's all the um, what is it? Uh, whatever intellectual property IPs. Yeah, but now, but this is where we shoot the boot camp with Rogers. Yep, he's already. And in we're, this is where we're introduced to uh, Agent Carter. Agent Carter, and of course, we see uh, Fillmore Hodge. Yeah, uh, a jerk. An yeah, A-ho. the jerk. So, well, I mean, come. This is a big brute guy. He's probably the type of people that you would want for a soldier. Yeah. I mean, he's going to get shot up anyways on the beach. He had a smart <laughs> mouth, too, you know? Like, hey, I didn't know. Hey, he called her the queen. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think during that time, a lot of people a lot of people still have a smart mouth now. But Yeah. I mean, people are... I mean, come on. If you're in the United States Army and some English woman comes on, comes out and starts telling you what to do, it would be a little odd, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, it would be a little odd. I mean, I would have questioned it myself. Like, what is a British lady yeah. doing here? I thought, I, 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 even though, moment, though, I said the same thing. Like, I even though, though we got to remember, they're out during this during yeah, the war. British, ally, yeah. the Britain, Britain and England worked closely together. I mean, well, that was well, I mean, a lot of nations. They flew to yeah. Europe, too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is the only way you're going to win the war. Yep. I mean, together. And then she I mean, punches his face. Yeah, told him to put the right foot forward. Yeah, so he had a good proper stance. Yeah, it is. She punched the crap out of. Him. Of course, <laughs> I like I like what uh, Tommy Lee Jones when he comes up to him. I think you've been introduced. Get your ass up out of the mud. Get yes. back line until somebody tells you what to do. <laughs> <laughs> See, he stopped right off with the, one of the great lines I love to hear from him. You know. <laughs> of course, he looks up. Plus, he's then he starts. Then he of course sees Rogers. And yeah, he's like, we have the best men. <laughs> he's like well how did that guy get in here <laughs> it must, I, it's probably like it's I must be seeing short. things then they have like a montage thing of them going through training and stuff yeah we see how tough it is Yeah. and then the best thing is we see how smart Rogers it really is you know when they come yeah, along well, the flag we saw Mar- so Roger we showed that other guy that he's being a bully you know when they're going through the barbed wire with a gun yeah I mean he, he kicks out that, the post yeah, out the post. and drops the barbed wire on yeah. him yeah I mean, we see all that. They're, I mean, everybody's been, and they're laughing at him when he's tied up in the the ropes. Yeah, the rope he fell down. Yeah, yeah. They're like, come on, Rogers. I mean, basically, they they watching him. He, they, I mean, it's pretty much saying you're, he's not going to make it because I mean, no. he can't even stay when they're when he's running with the group. He can't even stay up with them. No, he can't. And that was only the halfway point. That's when they uh, yeah. they show him how smart he was. Yeah, this is when we see that he, he uses his brains over everything else when he pulls the pin for the flag. That I know that's trying, so funny. Everybody's trying, trying to climb so up hard. that pole. Because yeah, he never said how to thing. get the flag, right? Everybody just immediately think that you have to climb up there to get the flag. Yeah, and he thinks outside the box. Yep. Yeah, that was so, outside the box. And so I guess the agent card is like, huh, this guy's pretty smart. And then, uh, then we get go to the scene where, you know, where Colonel Phillips is talking to the professor about picking the soldier. Yeah, picking the soldier. Like, why would you pick him? He's the most ideal choice. But then, like, uh, Phillips said, like, well, he's a bully, though. No. No, that's what the professor says. He's a bully. Yeah, I mean that's what I said. Like, no, but yeah, because yeah, no, I remember because yeah, the, the general, because yeah, I mean the colonel's yeah, like, yeah. if you put a needle it. through him, it's gonna go right through him. Yeah, he gotta go right through. That's so. But you know, of course, of course, that's when the the colonel goes. We want somebody with guts. Yeah, with guts. He throws that he throws a hand grenade out there. Yep. And then, and then of course, I mean he has to eat his own words because he goes, "I want somebody with guts," and it proved it. The guy was guts. Yeah. Oh, I know. And then he's coming. It's a guy he doesn't want. He's yeah, still he's skinny. still skinny. <laughs> Which is good. Just the way he says it is so great. Like, yeah, he's still he's skinny. skinny. He's like, whatever, you're right, but I still want the last word. <laughs> yeah. Wops off. He always wants the last word. I mean, I mean that's he the neat thing about his character. Because I mean, he tells, he even tells people before you say something, don't. Yes. <laughs> he, no, he said like, uh, right now yeah. would be the perfect time to not say what you wanted to say. <laughs> Whatever you're thinking, don't say it. 
But then the, that's when we go to Peggy. He's riding the car with Peggy. Well, no, we got to go to the uh, where he's no. in his bunk. He's in, in his the bunk, bunk like, uh, It was the night before the uh, experiment. Yeah, he's it was in the bunk. To go. Yeah, to have the yeah, conversation. So, plus, they're still in the United States, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Was, oh, yeah. The, the training's in the United States. Yeah, they're yes. training in the United States yeah. here. They were going to I mean, Europe. Yeah. Because they got to go to New York somewhere. Yep. And I'm thinking, wait, the the base camp we see where the base camp is in uh, in Winter Soldier. Yeah. Yeah, oh, we yeah, see yeah, the yeah. base camp because remember they go back to the camp. Yes. And apparently it's in New Jersey, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> was it New Jersey? I think it was in New Jersey. You know what? They never said. Maybe they don't want to piss anybody no, off. No, they did now. say. They actually they do say because they we see the military base in the Winter Soldier, and we also see the military the military base game. when they go back in time. Yeah, in game. game. Yep. It's New Jersey. I'm pretty oh, sure. I think so I, I think I remember that now. Yeah. So I guess we have talked a lot of trash, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? Rogers it's the neighborhood. Care. It's because of the neighborhood we're in, okay? Yeah, it's just Rogers didn't care, so I don't care, you know? Captain America. Yeah. So, so we see him talking to the professor before the deal. And that's yeah. where we learn about the super soldier serum. And about, we learn uh, about yeah. Smith. Yeah, he tells, this, he tells his story, his origin story right there. Why he that cried, right, you know, he wanted to do the right thing and things Plus, like he had that. some homemade snaps, snaps. Oh, I know. <laughs> that was, like, you know, when they had the conversation, when they like, that. what am I doing? You're having procedure tomorrow. Oh, we'll drink it tomorrow then? Oh, I mean, after tomorrow, like, I don't have procedure tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to drink it right now. I'm going to right waste good snot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a movie course, like that, there's still a lot of funny lines, man. I, I really like it. Scenes. Well, plus the actor was pretty good. Yeah, the actor was good. Yeah, I mean, come on. There was a lot of famous actors in this movie. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of well-known actors. I mean, Tommy Lee Jones. I for, I'm for, I forget all the. I mean, Hugh Weaving. And I forgot who plays the uh, the professor, the doctor. I can't think of what his name is. Yeah, I, I, I would have already told you. Yeah, I would have told you too, because it's somewhere we're supposed to know. Because he plays so many characters. He's a, he's a big town character actor. The guy's probably like, it's shaking his head. They don't even know who I am. Because he's English. Right I'm gonna look. It's Stanley everything. Tucci. Oh, uh, is it? Is it? Oh, is it Stanley Tucci? Yeah, Stanley. Tucci. Yes, that's who I was thinking of. Yes, yeah, Stanley Tucci. Okay. So yeah, we can't forget who that guy was. Oh, I know, right? Stanley. Tucci. But he does a good job because I mean, he always he's always different in every movie. Yeah, he is. He he's the character he plays. Yep. Stanley you know? Tucci is good. I mean, it's Captain America, is... Tommy Lee Jones, and Stanley Tucci. Right? Forget everybody mm. else. No. Well, yeah, but you gotta think. I guess you can't say everybody was famous because you know no, everybody no. becomes famous. Yo, yeah, I mean, after, after this movie, a, everybody knew who Haley Altwell is. Yep. I mean, how could you not? You know? <laughs> and I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Hey, I'm telling you, if if you're just like a regular movie actor, right? They they're trying to get inside the MCU because nerds is where the money is. Okay. Well, it's. I don't know if we could just say it's a nerd movie anymore, you know. No, it's I mean, the, comic books were nerd because everybody's watching it. Yeah, everybody's watching it, right? And would you the consider these action movies? I would consider them. Yeah, I don't know if I call them action. They are action. There's action in them. I mean, they, they would you'd go find them in the action section. Well, there's, I'm yeah, sure. drama. There's comedy and everything. Yeah, I mean, out of all of that, you'd call it an action movie. Hmm. I, you can't really call it a sci-fi movie. I don't think. Not this one. Well, I don't well, think you can call this one. Yeah, you can that, actually. But... Well, I mean, they're in the sci. I mean, comic, all comic books set in the sci-fi realm. Yeah, it just. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I guess you classify Marvel in a lot of things, but I'd say that if you wanted to put it's, them all in a certain spot, it's just not one genre. Movie. That's it. It's just not one genre. Well, we're lucky we don't have video stores anymore, so we don't have this problem going to figure yeah, to out. Yeah, be like, hey, what the heck is this movie? Like, where what yeah. section is it? Now, if you want it, you just type something in, okay? Yeah, you just type something in, and then you don't have to type or anything. Or hey, I'm looking for an action movie. movie. It's called uh, Avengers, or Captain America. Captain America. Oh, I think it's over on aisle five. <laughs> it's in the fantasy section. Yeah, we don't have that fantasy. problem. Fantasy. Hey, you're telling me Tony Stark's not real? <laughs> I'm telling you, Tony Stark is not real. <laughs> no, <laughs> disappointing. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. Any of these are not real, okay? <laughs> It could be. <laughs> yep. All right. So where were we? Oh, yeah, so yeah. then the next day, they, I guess they go back to Brooklyn because when they're driving yeah, they through go the back street, to Brooklyn because we see them. Uh, we see them driving with Peggy. Yeah, Peggy. He's driving with Peggy. Well, this is where we learned that yeah, remember he's trying to 
He's, he keeps calling her all kinds of stuff, like agent, beautiful woman. It really funny. That he's not like, uh, talking to girls. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, yeah, this is the longest conversation I've ever had. Yeah. <laughs> but basically, this is where he tells her tells her that if you're that if a bully picks a fight with you, and you back down, then you'll be backing down the rest of your life. Yes. So we get more of the bully story here, and then they go inside the building, the secret. The deal, secret which, building. Which is, you know, where they walk in the building and they see an old lady and she says something. Lovely like, weather we're having. Yeah, and I always carry, carry a, an, umbrella. an umbrella. And then they go in the back room, buzz them in. Here's, it's exactly like uh, Man from Uncle. Oh, I never seen that. The original Man from Uncle? Yeah, I never seen that. Can't remember if it has it in the movie or not. The Man from Uncle movie is good too, but the TV series, the very, very first episode, they go into like a, what is it? Uh, a tailor shop. Mm hmm or a dry cleaner shop and they go in the back room say something go in the back room and they go through the doors and it's this big giant labyrinth of room with all kinds of secret agents in it maybe that's how they envisioned stuff back then at that time era you know in the 40s yeah, it's, it's cool so in the 19th yeah, it yeah, is pretty cool there. you know i want some stuff like now it's spy stuff from the 60s though that's the 60s spy deal but it does make sense. I mean, why wouldn't you hide it? I mean, there's probably all kinds of stuff hidden in crappy places that we don't yeah, know. Yeah, because you would never guess it, you know? I mean, because you got to remember during the 30s, during Prohibition, most of the liquor, your bars and, and speakeasies and stuff were all hidden behind, like, barber shops. Which is funny, because I went to a barber shop that had a, that was a speakeasy during the, the, 40, the 30s and 40s. Really? And the funny thing is, you could see the holes in the, in the floor where they had a wall that they'd pop up the little hinges and open the wall so you can go into the bar. Wow. The thing is, the room was only like, you'd go in the room and you could only stand there and see a guy there. And I forgot what the building was originally, was supposed to be in the front. I think it was like a cigar shop. There was a shelf, like you'd go in the room and it'd be only four foot deep, even though you know the building's bigger than that. I'm like, how does, how does the police not know <laughs> that there's something hidden back? <laughs> not everybody's a building engineer, okay? All well, basically... Time. But the, but the history of this place is the police were on the payroll, so that's why they didn't investigate. Oh, okay. But anyhow, we we see that he talks to the old lady, and they go into a this secret secret laboratory. Yep. That's, that's where we see Star like Card. Basement or something. Yeah. Yeah, we see the professor and Star Card at work, and of course and Tommy Senators. Lee. Yeah, we see Tommy Lee Jones' character bring in the senator that he's been trying to get money from. Yeah. This secret that wouldn't give him any money money or like what, what he, when he first asked him like well we need someone to ch turn off the powers of the whole block well well they go they needed power so they're yeah. that's why they're on that power grid yes you know we needed some power and they have the biggest power grid is new york city so oh well <laughs> i mean come on no i mean you nothing phases people in new york anyway so no. the lights flickering off or going off for a few minutes no big deal you know nope. I mean, they'll probably just keep walking like it never happened. They probably miss, go through the doorways and everything. Don't run into walls. Yeah. Anywhere else in the America, if the electricity goes off, we have to stop where we're standing because we might run into something. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, and then that's the first time, like, oh, that's, they make another crack about um, how small Steve Rogers is. Yeah, no. Somebody needs to get that man a sandwich. <laughs> He's a kid. Somebody get that kid a sandwich. <laughs> Somebody get that kid a sandwich. <laughs> But it's cool. Then they put him in that little chamber. Yeah. Well, they little... inject him with stuff. You know, they inject him with it. I like it when he hits him with that shot, and he's like, "That wasn't so bad. That's penicillin." I like they they already made that. Um, oh, this penicillin joke is funny. It's like they already put him in some kind of tomb. That's why he made it big, because they know like whoever we put in there, right, it's gonna make it into equivalent size, right? Well, I'm glad, I'm glad they got it right. <laughs> they, they got it right. Because what if they put it like someone like you and me that's bigger than Steve Rogers, right? And then when we go like maybe six, seven or something, that's going to be too small when it comes out. Yeah, that's going to hurt. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, they put him in the tube. And that's when we see the process. He injects him with the super serum then puts him in the tube and they blast him with a bunch of radiation. Yeah. Which I don't know what if it ever says what kind of radiation. I'm gonna no, say they it's never gamma. touch one. I'm gonna what, say whatever. it's gamma radiation. Oh, but they don't want to say it. I don't know if they did or not, but it, why wouldn't it be gamma radiation? Because we all didn't, the only reason I'm saying it's gamma radiation because when we saw the Hulk, Bruce Banner was trying to use, he was using gamma radiation on yeah, his body. Was some kind of the same technology, yeah. Yeah, because they're doing a super so soldier serum there. Yes. You know that was the thing that was super soldier because even in the Hulk we also see. It, it lists the professor's name. It also has Stark Industries stuff. Yes. 
where all the secret serums, super soldier serums kept. So I'm thinking the whole process was actually to get injected and then get blasted with gamma radiation and you become Captain America. Yeah, so that's when they start turning up the power to whatever and then like yeah. they, they wanted to shut it down and that's when you hate Steve. Like, no, 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 I can take it. Keep mm-hmm. going. Yeah, and Peggy's like, please, I get earlier. Yeah. No, I can do it. I can take it. <laughs> I like that you could scream outside of this thing. You could hear every word everybody's saying. Wait, I'm thinking as hard as as quite a bunch of energy to get in fried. I'm thinking he's going to be loud. Yeah, they're going to be like, they didn't think about that. Like, hey, he could scream loud in all these machines, you know? Yeah. But the process was quick, though. Yeah, the process was pretty quick. Because when he opens it up, man, he's like, cool. Yeah, he's like 6'2 now. Like, yeah, like they popped it with so many steroids. It's unbelievable. Yep. But yeah, they changed the cellular structure. Of course, it's that's when we see it. It's kind of funny because you know he's standing there and Peggy standing in front of him, and he's not looking at her. He's just kind of looking off his face, like yeah, he's like looking like, like what's like yeah, he's got that look like he's like got that look like I'm so beautiful now. <laughs> he's much taller. Like I usually have need a step ladder, but now yeah, I like that. Up here. Cause then she said, "How do you feel, taller?" Yeah, taller because he was looking around <laughs> like, "Oh my God, this is I can a see a above everybody's view. head. This is amazing." <laughs> Of course, you see Peggy Carter wanting to touch his chest. Yep. And this is why not. Like, I think when he came out, right, everybody from that upstairs viewing booth came down. Yeah. Well, yeah. Except for the Hydra undercover guy. Well, he kind of came down. He came down and he well, grabbed Well, he was the thing. last one because he left that, you know, like some kind of cigarette lighter on his chair. Yeah. He left that cigarette lighter, which is a bomb. Yeah. And he and he grabbed and he grabs the serum and he shoots the professor. He shoots the, uh, yeah, professor. So he so the professor can't ever make any more. Yep. Which here's, but here's the weird here's the weird thing because we see him run off as a super serum, okay? Yeah. And he breaks the ser- serum too, busts the serum. And it, well, yeah, before you we do know, that, right? Like when um Steve came out, right? That's what like when he started running, he was like he felt kind of weird. Then he got used to it really quick. Yeah, but here's the question though: he broke the serum, right? Mm-hmm. But they still have super serum because we see it in the Hulk movie. Well, it probably took them like that long to to uh, we we. Uh, well, that's the thing. Well, maybe they actually made more and they had it stored somewhere. Maybe, or maybe they have the formula and it had to take someone smart to figure it out. Well, the whole point of the movie when they shoot the professor, the professor is supposed to be the only person that knows the formula. Oh. That's it's, I don't know if it mentions it in the movie, but in the comic book, that is how it goes. Well, that's no, why they, they didn't shot mention it. that. In the, no, not in yeah. this movie, at least. Okay. Well, the whole thing is. The super soldier serum is lost after the professor gets killed. Well, I was going to say because, you know, you later see, later um, when you see how it stopped messing with the Tesseract, right? He, he When, you know, when that, that blew up, he said, write it down. Maybe how it stopped was taking notes. No, well, he wasn't doing super soldier serum, though. He was taking notes on the Tesseract. No, no, no. I'm saying, like, because he was part of that experiment, you know. Cause yeah, he was but he, I don't think he did the for- formula. I don't know. All right, we, we, we can go on. But I know there's yeah. a super, it's, we, cool. it's made to look like, the last of the super serum, super soldier serum broken, and it's not. Yeah, maybe we know that from watching. You know. We know that from watching the Hulk. Yeah. So, so we know there's two super soldiers on from this movie, and we'll see another one in the future. Yeah. But then, yeah, he takes. Oh, the that, chase scene was pretty impressive though when he's well, running chase, through and the we dude also see the driving. Chase, but we also see Peggy Carter can shoot too. Yeah, she can shoot. Yep. That she shoots that guy twice when he's going up the stairs. And of course, here's the funny thing: he's running out the deal. He shoots the old lady in the chest. Of course, he shoots the machine gun. Yeah. Let me put the here's what it was just to make sense. You know, you always see that in movies, but I'm like, man, that's a Thompson machine gun. When she pulled that trigger, she emptied that clip. Yes. But somehow see, he picked it up and has rounds left in it. You know, these are the things that people don't question, okay? They should have questioned that one because it looked hokey, okay? You know what? There's, there's a thing at the end that I'm going to bring up later, but I'm not going to bring it up now. It's not the only thing I noticed, too. Like, yeah, the Tommy Gun thing, you know what? Just let it go. He has to get away, okay? Okay. He has well, he to get, get away. away so and it's that okay. We can see how impressive Steve Rogers is. Yeah, well, we see, because we see Peggy Carter shoot the driver. Yeah. And of course, yeah, she tries to shoot. Of course, she tries to shoot the car, you know, and of course. Steve Roger pushes it away, and she says she would have had it. And yeah. I'm sure she would have. She would have because she problem, was uh, but, looking for a shot. The, the problem is, though, if you shoot the driver or a car that's coming at you, the car keeps coming. Yeah. <laughs> well, isn't that when he, uh, oh, he took the uh, wheel, the bad guy? Do what? The, the Hydra guy. Oh, he took the wheel, right, when he was driving towards Yeah, he took the wheel, and he was driving towards her, you know? Yeah. 
And that's why she was shooting through the windshield at him. Yep. And she was probably would have killed him. But the problem is, if she would have killed him, he would have still hit her. Oh, yeah, the call would still hit her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so I, 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 okay. Then, of course, so Captain America actually did a good did her a favor by saving her. You know, this whole they, scene, right? He was wearing those clothes that he came in with. So it looks a little bit tight on him. <laughs> yeah, so the whole time tight. he's running, right? He's wearing a really tight shirt and really short and tight pants. I'm yeah, surprised it didn't rip. You know, he was running it, like, all the way to the docks. Well, he's not the Hulk, okay? So that's yeah. why his clothes stayed on. And you know what's really funny when that guy, when that guy grabbed the kid as a shape? Yes, uh, shoe, I love that. In the water. Yeah, that and was... you know, he's about to jump in the water, and the kid's like, "He's okay, okay. I can swim." He can swim. That Which, is so funny. Most people, most people back in the day probably could swim. That's so funny yeah, like, like what else is there to do? I know, because you're sitting there thinking, "Oh, he's gonna jump in to save the yeah, kid you know, now." Now the kid's kid, like, "Hey, no, I got it. You, Just go, go get, get that bad guy." I can swim. It's like a like little ball of wasting they didn't need, but then like you need to explain like Captain America would have gone in to save the kid, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, good thing he didn't have to, because yeah. he caught the Hydra. Well, he busted up the Hydra sub. Yeah, he, he catches he the Hydra swam agent inside when the dude was in a submarine. Yeah, he catches the submarine, he busts up, and then of course the Hydra agent eats cyanide and dies. Yeah, he cyanide, and that's when he gave the famous line like, "Oh, cut a oh, head off, two more." We yeah, that's where there. we hear hear the uh, Hydra Creed. Yep. And then we then we move on to some creepy ass stuff though. Well, we move on back to the laboratory where now we see Steve Rogers' fate. He just he just saved this, and now he's gonna get. And then the, all the Colonel wants to do is ship him off to uh, Alan McGoyle where they're making the nu- nuclear weapons. Yep. Which. Nobody knows they're making nuclear weapons at this you know, time. Phyllis was really disappointed that even though there was one super soldier, right? He wanted like a platoon of them. Yeah. And he said, well, oh, I got was you. Well, maybe it has it has a lot to do with his thinking at the moment, too. Yeah. I mean, because he's not somebody that thinks out of the box, apparently. You know, he no, wanted an army. And that's what he's stuck on. He wants an army. Now, now the way, I guess his disappointment is, this is over. You know, I worked, I put all this money, all my time in this, and this is over. This is all I got. Was a soldier I didn't really even want. Yeah, because he was so skinny. Yeah, even though he's super now. Yep, he's but, I mean, guts, he, of course, but... of course, of course, he didn't see him chase down the. Uh... No, he didn't. Nobody saw Willie really, actually. Because you know, he's like he's like he's still disappointed because you know, like he told that uh, senator, uh, Hydra got in the lab with a guy that you brought. Yeah, how is that? Yeah, how is that? You know, so basically, he smashed what, what this? I mean, because yeah, I think. To the most American soldiers, this is, I mean, we're, we're going to lose the war. This was, I mean, the Germans were just advancing. They were beating everybody. Yep. I mean, England was hanging on by a thread, you know? Yeah, I do remember that. Hey, did we pass the scene where, like, um, he gave, um, what is it, where the West Coast gave the doctor the Tesseract, and then they um, stabilized their power? I can't remember when that shows up. I don't. But, I don't. I don't think. I think that shows up after this scene. Oh, after this scene. Oh, because you know, trying to balance. Yeah. Yeah, because I think this is where we go. We shoot back to Germany, and then we we see more about the Red Skull and his weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> the WMD. Well, I mean, in a way, they were we- weapons of mass destruction because we follow because with the amount of power that the Tesseract could put out, and it, what was it? The uh, what was the Professor Stola, whatever his name is. Yes, Stola. Doctor Stoloff. Stoloff, or whatever his name is. Yeah. They're, they're putting in machines. They're making guns, clips. Yeah. It's all energy. They're just pulling energy off that. With energy like that, they could put them in bombs. I mean. Well, you know, the, I was really surprised though that like um they had the technology to stabilize the power from the Tesseract. But they right? didn't think they did it. Yeah, but they didn't think they did it first because remember. Stole off, or the, the the guy, he didn't think his equipment was going to even handle it. Yeah, and then, like, you know, that's when West Coast like, I didn't come here to, you know. Yeah, I didn't come all the way down here just for, uh, to be careful. Yeah, to be careful, yes. That's the whole reason why he injected himself, too. Yeah, I mean, that guy was, that was, like, worse than Tony Stark. I mean, he's like, run, but he got to run before you walk. Yeah, he got to run before you walk. <laughs> I mean, he just got jumps right into it, two feet first, and phew. So... So that's where we see the power. I can't remember where that if, if that was before the all the hero stuff or not. I don't think it was. What hero stuff? I mean, before we saw all the Captain America becoming Captain America. So. Oh yeah, that's when uh, the senator talked to Steve Rogers and he wanted to use him as a uh, uh, like a marketing scheme. Well, not marketing yeah. scheme. Right? Well, a marketing war, yeah, the still war bond. Yeah, it's just a war bond. Which is neat because it, the comic books in that time 
most of the comic book characters sold war bonds, like Batman and Robin. Yeah. They'd always have little comics with no, them selling yeah. war bonds. I like how they did that in the movie, too. Yeah, I like they how they did it. they gave that cloth, like a cotton uniform, you know? Oh, yeah, they, they made the well, this the thing. But that's when they made him Captain America. Yeah, Captain America. Everybody's yeah. like, hey, we'll just make up a character called Captain America. You're all in all the newspapers for tracking down that Nazi agent. Yep. So now, and then because like in the first, and that's when we see that comic book. The first, it's actually a reprint of the original first Captain America comic book where he punches Hitler in the face. Yes, he punches Hitler in of course, the face. Of course, the comic book's different in the movie because they had to take off the picture of Bucky at the bottom. Oh. Because in the comic books, Bucky's a kid. Really? Yeah, Bucky's a kid. He's like a sidekick. He's like a, he's actually Robin, believe it or not. Because <laughs> you gotta think Batman and Robin is real popular in this town period. Because I mean, Captain America during that time was actually a copy of others. Because there was a superhero called the Shield. He wore it and he carried a shield around just like the ones on your hat. Oh, really? That's why yeah, they yeah, went yeah. to a round. That's why they went to a round shield. Because oh. the people who made the comic book character the Shield, they complain. They're like, Captain America looks just like our superhero. And they're like. No, he's not. He has a round shield now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of people are like, uh, Bucky's like Robin. And they're like, no, he's not because uh, Captain America is. Well, so all this time, they were, um, <clears throat> I guess they're touring in the U.S. gets um, Bond. And then you can tell that Steve is starting to recognize the script really easily. Yeah, it's well, it, it gets better. I think it also improves because, you know, when the ladies are walking around, their uh, little dresses are all different colors, yeah. and then they all look the same eventually, and they all in line. And then you know, of course, he's punching Adolf Hitler in the face. Well, and then the the, the crew got bigger times. and bigger, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's becoming real popular. It's a big show in the United States. Yeah, because a big well, show, like he's yeah, holding like, that bike with the three well, girls on top of the. Yeah, the, well, there's the, not a lot of things to do during the war either. You know, there's yeah, a lot of yeah. shows. You can't see a lot of shows because there's the, the war fighting. I mean, yeah, everybody just, that was this. actor. Yeah, everybody was an actor in that time, like Ronald Reagan and them. They're uh, they joined the army. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they went into the army. Yeah, they're in the yeah, army the fighting the they war. Can get. Yeah, so so this is real popular, and I think when is I can't remember when it shows. So that we, I mean, that's when we keep going back to overseas to see the Hydra. That's when we learn about what Hydra wants to do. Yep, what Hydra is. Okay, because the, uh, the three officers from the SS was yeah, uh, the giving three. Smiths. Uh, crap about you know hitler gave you this thing and they're like you mean you tell me what it is exactly it is it's exile yeah he didn't feel uh, sorry i got burned because i think like i guess on the nazi side they wanted the super soldiers too well that's the thing well yeah well that's the problem you gotta think the nazis during the whole time of the, even the true nazis they were the master race is what the way they saw it and hitler always wanted this they even had a they even had a program where they're finding the best ss soldiers in the best looking German women, so they'd have kids. They put them yeah. together, have the kids, and they yeah. thought these kids would be these super, super humans. Yeah. And that's the thing. And the thing is, the Red Skull to him, to himself, he's like, I'm what Hitler wants. Yeah. He goes, he did. Hitler is like a little tiny, whoopy little man, wussy little man. And so is all the Germans. He goes, But I am the the most advanced human on the earth. I'm yeah. a god. He believes he's a god, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, he even tells that to Cap, uh, Steve Rogers, you know, he how does. both of us, we are superhuman. We are above all humans. Well, yeah, we're we above just, them, yep. Yeah, we're above them. That's the way he sees himself. He's above him, and that's what we get from that story. So we see them developing weapons and stuff. And then that's when we go back to Steve Rogers. He gets to finally go to Europe yeah, and do a show, and that's when he realizes the soldiers over there, they're busy fighting a war. And they're beat they down really already. Don't, yeah, they don't really care about him, his stupid little show, you know. They want they, he's not they care on the girls, you know. Well, of course, because they ain't seen any. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't want to see a bunch of girls dancing around with skirts? Yeah, I, know, right? I, like, I mean, you've been too. fighting a war, you haven't seen anybody. It's like, hey, here's comes this guy in pajamas <laughs> with a bunch of dancing girls. With red boots would, on. Yeah. What do you want to see? I mean, remember they're like, get off the stage, Tinkerbell. Yeah, Tinkerbell, nice boots. <laughs> like, come on, guys, we're on the same side. Even at that moment, Steve is never upset. I mean, I think he is upset. I mean, he's not. He doesn't get mad, but I mean, he didn't get mad. The he's thing, a little yeah. depressed because, like he, like you said, he, he wants help, to help. Yeah, he wants to be helped with. He wants to be one of those guys. That's what yes. he wanted to do. Instead, he's being paraded around. And he's not really fighting. I mean, he's doing the war bonds, and he's proud of that fact. You know, he's not. Yeah. Oh, I have to do the stupid war bonds. I mean, he's still there, but like we see him driving the cartoon. Yes. 
Oh of the yeah, monkey. he drew the cartoon. Yeah. And he's like he's making fun of himself. Yeah, making fun of himself. And then of course, uh, Agent Carter sees it, and then she tells him about the men. And it turns out that he realizes they just got in a huge fight with Hydra. Yeah. And, and most of them got captured. Yeah, a lot of yeah. lost a lot of men and a large portion got captured. Like Four hundred men, because they talk about yeah. that later. Yeah. And then he realizes Bucky's one of the men they got. Yeah, the one oh seven, because they yeah, they said that killed. earlier. Yeah. Yeah, they, Sergeant they got killed. Bucky so Bonds. that's when he has to go to talk to Colonel Phillips. Yeah, Colonel Phillips again. <laughs> yeah, he has to see Colonel Phillips. It's just so great every time, like you know. Yeah, he's like got that kind of. Oh, here's Steve Rogers. Yeah, Steve Rogers, you know. And now he's like a, a like an actor for a show or something, you know. Yeah. And, and he's he trying to, he's feel like he's trying to command him, like, hey, I know how to spell. Yeah, I don't know, I like that. It's, I know how to spell. I write thousands of these letters. And of course, yeah. he's like, yeah. He goes, I already know this name. Yep. And he's like, are you going to do a, rec- a rescue? Yes, I am. It's called Win in the Wall. Yes, go in the Wall. That's a quick I like line. it. You don't get, you don't get to give me orders. <laughs> I get what he tells him. You don't give me orders. Yeah, and he tells him, "Hey, if I if I if your schedule is correct, like, don't you have to for some place to be in thirty minutes?" Yeah, I like it. He goes, "Yes, I do." Looking at the map, he goes, "Yes, I do." Yes. Of course, this is when Peggy knows this guy's going to do what he wants. Yeah, that's when uh, Peggy... I feel upset. That like, hey, right now is the best time to not say whatever you wanted to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever you're thinking about saying, don't say it. Oh. And, and that's course, when, uh, he, yeah, he tried to this. He decided he do, he wanted to walk there, but then uh, Peggy gives him a ride. Yeah, well, Peggy gets him transportation. Well, his, the neat thing is, I like the scene where the the girl goes to get her helmet. Yeah, because you know Captain America wears the, the helmet kid. with the yeah. A on on the yes. head. So that's where we see he's got the blue helmet with an A on it. Yeah. Which, now we got we get the war cap the World War II Captain America that we yes. saw that they drew later on in the comic books, but I always thought was one of my favorite costumes is the World War II. Captain the World War II, yeah, Captain America with the helmet. Yep. Yeah. So he gets on a plane flown by Stark where we see Stark's a pilot, which makes sense because Howard Hughes is a famous pilot there. Yes, that. and Howard Stark knows how to fly. Yeah, yeah Howard Stark can fly. So he's flying. So he's flying through there, and of course, you know, he we, we realize he likes Peggy. But of course, Stark asks her if she wants to go get some, we'll get some fondue. He's like, uh, uh, Steve Rogers didn't know what that is. Yeah, no, I like it because <laughs> what the heck is oh, fondue? Yeah. So you're fondueing? <laughs> Are you fine doing? Like, what's going? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> of course, you know I like it when he's gonna jump out the the door. Peggy tells him stuff, like starts to give him. Or he he gives Peggy an order. She yeah. goes, "I you can't order me. Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm a, a captain." captain. <laughs> <laughs> Which he's not really a captain. <laughs> no, it that's and he carried that mannerism like when he went to uh, rescue those guys. And he's not ta- giving them orders, right? He's like, "Are you sure you know what you're doing?" Of course I do. I punch all you off over over two hundred times. Yeah, excuse me. <laughs> I like it when they. When, that's the neat thing, though. When he goes saves those guys, you know, there's a, uh, there's the Japanese guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Are you sure you'll be taking everybody? I'm from uh, Fresno. <laughs> yeah, I'm from Fresno, which they're supposed to make it seem like I guess they thought he was a Japanese soldier. But yeah. the thing is, the neat thing is that character, that actor actually appears in a. Uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. He plays the he's the uh I think he's the uh principal of the school. The same guy, same character? No. Well here's the thing. Here's the neat thing that made it. He's like the grandson of the character we see in World War Two. No. Because the character's name is I think his name was Tom Mor Murata, Murata or something. Yeah. And he's Professor Murata in the future, and there's a picture of his World War II grandfather hanging on the wall in, in the Spider-Man. Homecoming? Yes, in Homecoming. <clears throat> Oh my gosh, that? I did not notice that. Because you didn't think that actor looked the same when you're watching Homecoming? I, I did pay attention. I got, oh, I, we, we got, we Yeah, he it. looked the same. And the neat thing is, because I was thinking when I was watching Homecoming, I was like, that guy looks just like from uh, Captain America 2. And if you look on the wall, it's got a picture of him. So I was like, that's got to be his grandfather. Oh and they, my they confirmed it. If you find it on IMV, they confirmed it, you know? Oh. I don't know if they man. say it's his grandfather, but it's got to be his grandfather. You oh, know? that's cool. I mean, because they got the characters have the same name and the same actor, so I thought, oh, that is so cool because it's a oh. link. No, that is cool. Hey, before we go on, right before they, but here's uh, another. Okay, wait, wait, before they go on, before they get rescued, we forgot to show that when those three SS soldiers come, he he showed them the weapon, and that was the first oh, time yeah. we saw a weapon fired by um the power by the Tesseract. Yeah, well, we yeah, because we forgot that one of the uh, SS guys noticed that he's going to take over Berlin. Yeah, oh, uh, you know, that's at what... that moment, right? I thought that's where his factories were. You know, for no, I, I guess they were somewhere else. 
Yeah, Berlin. No, they weren't in there. Berlin. Where were they at? They tell you where they're at. They're up in the mountains somewhere yeah. else. I forgot where they said they were, but they're way up in the mountains, long ways from Berlin. Yeah, they had a map anyways, saw Steve this Sawyer. is where we. This is where he realizes that he doesn't need the Nazi party anymore. Either. No. So he's just gonna take over the whole world with uh, his own like Hydra members, I guess. Yeah, with all his uh, soldiers, because like we see that when they do the Hydra salute, they both put their hands up. Yeah, yeah. hell Hydra. Like, then you, know, you look at the doctor, out, you know, because they run out of one-handed salute. So, <laughs> so like I was gonna say, like lo- looks like the doctor Wesley wasn't really down with like the Hydra thing. He just didn't want to die. <laughs> yeah, he was because really he looks so pressured. He's like, oh, hell Hydra. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was. He was not with with the thing. I think he was just there for the technology to, you know, do his research. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what you use. Our most scientists are yeah. down with whatever if they can get their research done. Yeah, we get just the research done. But the neat thing is when we go back to the, the camp where he lets those guys out, there's also a British soldier. We saw that British soldier? Yes. Remember that guy? The ginger. Yeah. The what? Is it Was he a, was he a red-headed guy? No. The one with the mustache, right? Yeah, well, he's the English guy. Oh, English guy. Okay, okay. Yeah, the English guy. Well, I mean, I you're not talking about Dum Dum Dugan, are you? The guy with the the, the bowler hat. Yeah, yeah, I was talking about that, that that's guy. Dumb, yeah. That's Dum Dum Dugan. Oh, okay. He's a shield agent eventually. Oh. Well, I don't know about in the MCU, but in the oh, comic okay. books, he's oh, in the a, shield comic agent. a shield agent. Okay. But you got and then the but the British guy, I forgot what his name is, but in the comic books, he becomes the Union Jack. He becomes a superhero called Union Jack. Oh, I I know he's that name superhero. from the comic book cards. Yeah, he's a he's a superhero called Union Jack. Oh. But the neat thing is all these guys together, they're called the ha- Howling Commandos. Ah, that's, I was going to ask you the what com- they were called. Because the, the comic book is actually called Nick Fury and his Howling Commando. Oh. Which, of course, there's no Nick Fury here. Which, no. when I was watching this movie, I was thinking, so is Nick Fury supposed to be like hundreds of years old? or? So Captain America, America took, they wrote that part of Captain America still for the MCU. Yeah, so basically Captain America becomes Nick Fury. Okay. Movie. So well, we, we, well, they they rescue everybody. That's when some of the guys start using their new weapons. Like, hey, are you sure? Are you qualified to use that? Then he shoot that guy in the vaporize. Like, okay. Yep, <laughs> I thought okay. that scene was so funny. Okay. Yeah, you know, they get all the weapons. Plus, we that's when we Captain Steve Roger finally sees the Red School. Yes, that's all. Because oh, well, well, he rescued Bucky because he was really looking for Bucky first. Yeah, he was looking for Bucky, which is a neat scene that that you might want to realize that. They're doing experiments on Bucky. Yes. And it's important because Bucky returns later and he's the same age as Steve Rogers. Yes. So apparently he can be the stuff, the chemicals they put in him while he's laying on the table right now is the chemicals that keep him alive when he's frozen in the ocean, the lake and the, the Soviets find him. Yes. So that's, that's because I'm, because you know, when you watch the movie, you are kind of thinking, so I wonder what kind of crap they did to him. <laughs> well, when the, the scene where he's rescuing Bucky, that's when um, Steve looked at the map. Well, I guess where they were manufacturing these uh, yeah, defense weapons. Where you yeah. see all the yeah all their their locations yep. where they get all their stuff. And of course, he comes con- confronts a. Uh, well, before he, he confronts well, rescue, uh, Bucky was surprised to see him there. So he, like he was kind of out of it. He's asking him like Steve, and he's like, yeah, "Oh, they did something to me," you know. And when when now you're proud to bring it up, like, "Hey, now they see the red skull, right?" And and then. They had a little conversation like what you said about before about their God, you know, amongst men. Yeah. And then he pulled off his face. Yeah, he pulled his <laughs> and then face Bucky's off. like, you, you don't have one of those, do you? Yeah, you don't have one of those, do you? <laughs> it's, a, it's a very serious moment, and he makes a crack like that. <laughs> like, yeah, but that thing is, though, I would think, though, because of the whole experiment, that Steve Rogers' character would actually be stronger. Because it's a it's a more advanced yeah I, I, I yeah because he's so more too. advanced and stuff not just because of it, his deal you because know, I mean because his face didn't peel off <laughs> yeah the face didn't peel off and you know, I believe like uh, Captain America was stronger too yeah I think he was because you know Zola pulls the handle and breaks them up yeah to break them up because he wanted to <laughs> which, leave you know because he's not which we get to the next the next thing which kind of puzzled me okay they're blowing up the whole factory all right mm-hmm. so. Fresco escapes in an aircraft, which would be really fast. And the best way to get out there, he tells Zola to go get his car. Yeah, that's one of the things. Like, okay, do it. Like, so he has time to go back downstairs. To yeah, get the, the car. building's blown up, and he goes all the way back downstairs to get his car and tells him not to crash it. I'm like, 
Why didn't they just both go get in the car? Yeah, well, you know that's a badass car, by the way. I don't know what kind of car it is, right? But it's pretty cool. Well, it's not a real car. It's based on like it's supposed to look like a Mercedes or some stuff. Oh, that's why I figured. Okay. Yeah, with a super engine and supercharger on it. Yeah. You can't really scratch, turn. The, you can't really scratch. turn the car. Yeah. Basically, his car is like his tank. You know, it's yes. just like, hey, everybody, I don't want you to know that my face peeled off. So look at this. <laughs> Oh, that's I mean, just a great line. Like, dude, you don't have one of those, do you? <laughs> so, you know, that's when you find out, you know, like, uh, Bucky and Steve's uh, relationship as friends is really deep because Bucky wasn't going to leave Captain, uh, you know, Steve there. Yeah. You know, they, they yeah. don't they don't show you the jump. Like, but apparently he has some kind of super jump, but they just phase into, like, okay, next scene is, like, they're walking back to camp with, like, 400 people. <laughs> yeah. He's looking very, everybody's amazed, and I like it when he goes after the colonel. He goes, I, I submit myself to this yeah, very see, action. That's doing the right thing. He yeah. rescued everybody, then he had to tell the colonel, like, I'll let you turn myself in. For this I, I like that when the colonel goes, oh, no need. Yeah, there's no, no necessity. Because you know, yeah. the moment before he shows up, the colonel's all mad at, at uh, Agent Carter. Yes. He's like, man, I can't believe you did that. He goes, I can only punish you. I can't punish Howard. <laughs> I like Star. that he's yeah yeah because he's the weapons he's a weapons kind he's rich I can't touch him because yeah. he's rich yeah but I could do that I could do something to you yeah I could do something to you and then no. that's when that's when we get the that's when they form the special group now yeah that's when uh like uh well that's when Steve Rogers was telling them about like the locations on the map. and then you know yeah. like, uh, that's when Phillips told him like hey, you should lead this group because you know you're the one who found it. And yeah. he rescued 400 well, people. Well, Phillips didn't actually say that. He says, I have a special group for yeah, you. Yeah, he wants a special group, but he's... Of course, he says, of course he says the same line that everybody uses in almost all movies. All due respect. Yes, like, all due respect. Just say what you want to say. I mean, that doesn't really help anything. All no. due respect. <laughs> like, it just, it just tells the person that you're about to say something that they're not going to like. Yep. So he basically formed a team from the people he rescued. Yeah, because it shows him back to the bar with the Howling Commandos. Yep. And of course, they all agree with their only little, their all little stipulations. Yeah. And that's and the was neat the... part. That's the scene where, where I like him. He was with Bucky at the bar. Yes. And that's when uh, Argy, Agent Carter comes in. Well, even before Agent Carter comes in, he know he asked Bucky if he want to join his group, and he's like, "Well, I'm not going to follow Captain America. I'm going to find. Uh, I'm going to follow that boy from Brooklyn that he won't back yeah. down from a fight." I thought that yeah. was really good. That was a good scene. Yeah. I forgot all about that. That yeah. he said in that. And then, but then that's and when, again, uh, well, that's probably because Haley, because uh, man, that's because uh, Agent Carter shows up in that red dress. I mean, she was the first time she wore civilian clothes in the whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> and, and then you pretty much forgot about everything else they said. Yeah, they did. They talk, they talk about like the that. dance and finding a yeah, uh, direction. I like that where they're talk. I like that where she's talking to him about the dance and she's looking at, at, at Steve. No, Bucky stood have, up. Yeah, so let's yeah, do it. But Bucky stood up and Bucky's like <laughs> looking at her and he just keeps talking. And every time she says something, he answers her, but she never looks at him. Yeah, she never looks but, at him. If she walks out, I like it because I'm invisible. Yeah, I'm I'm invisible. turning to you. I'm turning <laughs> to you. <laughs> what happened here? I know. And then the next thing is just like, you know, tomorrow at 8 a.m. Yeah. yeah, and then that's like when it. um that scene he he talks to the other lady and she kisses him. Yeah, what was her name? Because she's I, in Games of Thrones. Oh, she Game is. I don't yes. remember, but like I like that scene because like it pointed out like you know four hundred wives. You know, he, it shows that he still yeah. doesn't know how to talk to girls, right? Because you know, like a lot of women are grateful. He's like, why? Because you know, the like the husbands yeah. are alive because of you. And he's like, um, I don't think all of them are married. Yeah, <laughs> it's so lame. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, she goes well on behalf of America, yeah. which is neat because you know she's got that accent and she's from English. <laughs> yes, she just wanted to kiss him. That that was the whole thing, you know. Hey, Captain America. <laughs> and then at the mo right moment, you know, Peggy comes in. And she was all upset. Yeah, like, she was hey, mad. I guess you know yeah. finding the right partner wasn't that hard, huh? <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that. She storms off. Of course, that's when you see him with Howard Stark. Yeah, hard start is like, yeah, fun, fun yeah, dude. Yeah, just, just cheese. <laughs> bread and cheese. Yeah, just bread and cheese. Like, I was hungry. <laughs> yeah, I like it when he, when he tells her, he goes, he goes, he goes, and of course he goes, it's okay not to understand anything about women. I don't need that. Yeah, no, nobody, nobody understands anything about women. Don't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, they go in there and that's where he shows them all those different yeah, shields. Yeah, all the uh, prototype of the shields that you know. Yeah, and of course Captain America reaches on the table and grabs that vibranium. Yeah, vibranium. 
which the funny thing of the comic book is supposed to be vibranium and at the end yeah, and yeah but they don't have the and rights to that yeah so we figured that out well you know? they do now <laughs> but hey anyway it's vibranium of course we anybody that read comic books knows you can only get vibranium from one place on earth yeah yeah exactly so um, well, before yeah but before they you know they don't even touch on that much because then you know steve asked him how come this is not standard issue then that's when how is that like well this is all we that we have every vibranium number we have right it went into yeah. that shield yeah that's but that's anybody's reading it that means wakanda exists in this yep. universe now and um i like that they showed that like it's really absorbent like it's, it's super absorbent right and then they asked uh, he asked peggy like what do you think they just shoot him immediately I know. like four shots I know, when you pulled up the 1911 and just paused him, I'm like, boom, 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 boom. Like, good thing like, that shield work. It's shield work. Right? I like it. They, right after they say it was super absorbent, right? The bullet just fell down on the ground instead of ricocheting. But here, I saw somebody point out something that, you know, because he said it takes in vibranium, uh, vibration. Yeah. Somebody put, pointed this out. You know, then he throws the shield and it bounces off stuff. If it doesn't take in vibration, then how does it bounce it off the back? Yeah, I know. It should have just fallen off the too. floor. Yeah, it just whoever throws. Yeah, it should just hit something, right? And then just fall straight down. Yeah, but hey, it's Captain America, okay? Yeah, it's Captain America. It's, I mean, it always comes back. Because he's a super soldier, and that's, that's the way it works. So he know how to throw it, yeah. I mean, that's the, that's why we can't throw the shield. Yep. I mean, he can't. And, it's like Thor's hammer. I mean, he can pick up Thor's hammer. That's yeah. If he can pick up Thor's hammer, he can make a shield bounce off of him. Yeah, he could do anything, okay? He's worthy okay. of the shield. He is worthy of the shield that came from Wakanda. Yeah. So I guess after they shot that, right? Like both the looks on Howard and Steve's face, fucking Peggy walk away. They, 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 they're talking to each other, but they're just looking at her. Like, I have some ideas about the uniform. Yeah, man. Yeah, like, and done. They just keep looking at her the whole time because she just fired a weapon. But this is the neat thing. But you also remember this is the scene where it makes it seem like uh, Stark and, and Captain America are now friends. Yes. Because cause this is pointed out. Because remember in uh, Avengers, you know, Tony doesn't like Steve Rogers at yeah. all. And he's like, I don't know why my dad lo- talked about you so much. Yes. Because, I mean, this is because it even proves it in the middle. Because you've got to remember after Steve Rogers goes missing, t- uh, t- uh, Howard Stark looked for him for years. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Even, they even said that in this movie, like, keep looking. Yeah. Yeah. He looked Not at for the him. end. Yeah. So, I mean, apparently they became pretty good friends. Yep. Well, no, well, we could skip. Well, I won't say I mean, you don't really lot, see it in the movie, but just by that dialogue, that's what we. Yeah, it's just from like, the dialogue they became friends, you know, like kind of like Bonnie and Q. Right? And he gave him a, and he did build him an awesome looking suit. Yes. It looks like all leather. It looks good. And that was kind of like, that's when they start hunting down those factories and, you know, yeah, that's where we see them the down. group. Yeah, hunting down all the deals, and you know, Captain America throws a shield, and knocks the hydrate. Throws a shield, and, and he free. fires guns. So apparently, he kills people. You know, because this is war, right? So they, I yeah, guess it's war. Except, I mean, he's Captain America. He's a soldier. And that's I mean, when uh, West goes start getting mad because I guess apparently he's mad at the at the doctor, and like the doctor is not built for stuff like this. Okay. <laughs> this, yeah, I like that's it. Your job. In a way, this scene reminds me of uh, Obadiah Stane when he's yelling at that scientist. Yes. Because remember, because Red Skull's like, you can't beat a guy with a shield. Yeah. So it's, it's almost similar to that scene. I'm a scientist. I'm not a soldier. I'm not even yeah. anywhere close to that spectrum, okay? That's <laughs> yeah. not my job description. Yeah, what do you think, man? He, he said something about, like, I, I make the gun, but I'm not the one that fires it. Yeah, he goes, yeah. I make guns. I don't even know how to fire a gun. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, I mean, it's so funny that he, he was just upset. That's it. He was yeah. just taking it out on the doctor. I know, well, dude, he's got, he's got a red skull. He's got a lot of things. And then he on. shoots that dude, you know, like, oh, they annihilate all of us, not all of us, and he shoots that guy. Yeah, there. shoots him. Because like, he wanted oh, to okay. shoot the doctor, but uh, he knew that he needed the stupid doctor. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, no, like, Kind of like I Batman. Wanna... Wasn't it, uh, was it in, uh, in Joker when Jack said, like, you are my number one guy? Yeah. <laughs> yes, you're my number one. You're my it's number just one. like that. Like, I can't kill you. I would like to. But I'm gonna kill somebody else instead. Well, I don't think the Joker ever wanted to kill Bob, though. No, no, Bob, yeah. Yeah. But you know what? Like this is just gets to the end, and I think um they're about to hit the last location. Like we're coming to the end of the movie. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Close. And then it's, I can't remember how. Yeah, Steve Rogers tells him where the last base was. Yeah, the last base was, and then that's like after the West Go needed to uh, tell him to hey finish the job before the uh, the American finishes his. That's where we get to the train scene. Yeah. 
Yeah, because they got – well, actually, we don't know where the last base is, remember? No. We don't know fine. where the last base is. And that's where they go to the train. They're going to get uh, Zola because they know Zola's trying to get somewhere in a hurry. Yeah, they're in a hurry. So they know, like, oh, whatever they need, they need him over there, wherever it is. Yeah, because I forget, this is an important scene in the movie. Yes. Because it sets, I... up, it sets up the rest of our movies. And then they had to bring him some corny-ass shit for – um. I swear, dang it! I said I was gonna try my best, but like, yeah, the like the the Coney Island ride, and then yeah, yeah. and then I threw up. It does not payback, yeah. is it? It's just payback, yeah. Because, and then of course they slide down the rope, get on the Dude, that get scene on the was train. pretty cool. They slide down the rope like it's very Mission Impossible or 007. Yeah, I wouldn't do it. But yeah, three of the three of the guys. I mean, what it was him, Winter Soldier. Well, I shouldn't say Winter Soldier. Him, Bucky, yeah, Bucky. and Gabe. Yeah. They jump on the train. Yeah, because Gabe was going to, I guess, uh, where the Dr. Soul office. And yeah, then, uh, well, yeah they went in the first deal, and he went over the top, I guess, to go in the compartment, yep. the main compartment, while they kept the uh, soldiers busy. Yep. And, of course, this is where they get in the – there's a fight between all that, showing their big electric weapons. Of course, they blow the wall out of the train, and then – And Bucky, Bucky flies away. And uh, he was trying to save him, but, you know, he can't. Yeah. That's why he lost I Bucky. Can't remember the, I can't remember the comic books – if Bucky dies or not, I think Bucky falls off an airplane to the ocean. Oh, so, okay, this is close. He just, whatever well, he's falling to, right? He's going to get frozen. Yeah, there, he I falls guess. into the water. Well, yeah, in the comic book, something happened to Bucky, too, I think. Really? But it, something also happened to Captain America, too. Yeah. Well, no, they never did show it. Actually, Bucky falls off a he plane. He just falls off, but you don't, like, you just yeah, assume in the he comic dies. Book. But in this you know, one, in this one we assume he dies. Because, I mean, Bucky falls right out the train and tries yep. to save him. Of course, Captain America ain't happy about that. No. I mean, this is his best friend. Because uh, they he captured was... a doctor, and then uh, Colonel Phillips made, made, a, made a crack about that. Yeah, I like it, though. Yeah, because, you know, when he goes in there, and, you know, Colonel Phillips is like... I well, first uh, they go in there with the milk and steak. Just to yeah, the show him the them how, how rare it is to have any cow products there. Yeah, well, it's like, he goes, you know, I'm being nice. Because, you know, he's trying to tell him, I'm being nice to you. He goes, yep. I got you steak, dinner. And milk, too. You know how hard <laughs> it is to come by at this time milk yeah, and but steak. also like it then when he tells him he goes by the way uh we already said how to message saying that you're going to help us yes <laughs> he goes and you know steve rogers kind of mad at you so he's not going to offer you very much protection if you don't take this yeah because you know you just threw away uh you threw his friend's best friend out the window <laughs> yeah just his best friend out the window so of course it's that's where all we also see where Zola goes. He's like telling him about Zola. He goes, I guess he thinks he's a god. He goes, you know, he thinks he's a god, but he also, because he can do it. Yeah, he can do it. Like, that's when you know Zola is like, yeah, this guy is, the Resco is kind of crazy, okay? But he's also, he can do it. Yeah, he can do it. He can end so it So this all. is where where we where he realizes this is real serious. Yep. So, of course, Zola, you know, because. Because uh, Colonel Phillips goes, my new best friend tells me the location. Yeah, the new best friend the location. <laughs> so that's when they go go to the hideout. Well, with, you know, of course, starts off with Captain America riding on his awesome bike that Howard Hughes built. I meant Howard Stark built for him. Yes. That's when they make the crack about, like, you know, we can't just not go in and knock on the front door. Like, no, that's exactly what we're going to do. <laughs> we're going to go right through the front door. Yep. And he does. He rides his bike. Blows his bike up and blows up the front door, and they all get in there. And then, and then he, he's, he's planning to get captured, yeah. Yeah, he gets captured, yep. yeah, exactly. He gets captured, and they take him in there. And of course, you know, he's like, Red Skull's trying to tell him how great he is. And yeah. he's like, Yeah, I know I'm great, uh, but I just want to be a normal guy. And he gets you know, punched around we, his face. We forgot that line when Red Skull meet Captain America the first time. Ah, Captain America, I'm a fan of all your movies. <laughs> <laughs> they that scene where they're walking on that treadmill in front of all the trees. Yeah, like, what, what a fan of all your films, what a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> but again, we also see, you know, because they're in the lair, and of course he's getting slapped around, because that's what vill villains do. They always capture the bad, the yeah. superhero, and they slap him around. It's like a James Bond movie. Yeah. <laughs> but see, the and the villain always leaves, you know. Yeah, they do. They, they're for some reason instead you know if the villains would stay and finish the job that'd be the end of the movie <laughs> yeah i know and then that's when uh like you know when he got captured they, they uh they fly into the window even uh, colonel phillips was in this fight because i like it when he comes and he shoots that guy right like the guy's like one head uh cuts off two more let's find two more heads <laughs> <laughs> let's go find two more and then awesome. we, i like it because didn't we see that when that guy had that flamethrower yeah. And then the Hydra agent with the flamethrower, and of course, Peggy walks up and shoots the tank. <laughs> yes. You know, that was a pretty cool scene when he, before he got captured, like those two guys were through the two flamethrowers making like a boxing him in. That was pretty yeah. cool, too. 
Yeah, where, where he couldn't move. Yeah. Yeah. Because I yeah. mean, even Captain um, Captain America is not flame retardant. No. <laughs> you know, what I was thinking because like it's not like a whole wall, right? He could have just rolled under it. <laughs> he probably could, but they probably would have put their arms down. Yeah, put their arms down, but then like I mean, it's heavy, fall. you know. Yeah, and they would be kept it like this. He could just throw the shoe at one of the guys because you know the arms are like this. But he wanted to get captured. Yeah, he wanted to get captured. Yep, that was his plan. So, so that was so, pretty I mean, good. That was pretty good. And then we see the big giant airplane. Yep, big, big giant airplane. Like, um, what's really cool that he got on the plane, right? You know, they, they were flying off, and those guys were like trying to get on these little planes just to like, you know, uh, yeah. you know, get well, to wherever. You know, the going. funny thing about the airplane though, the airplane was awesome looking. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, but you know, when they get in the cockpit, you see how big the cockpit is. It's got all that wet, wasted air, that, all that empty space in there. I'm like, hey, you, know uh, you could have saved ceilings, that. Okay. No, you didn't. They could have put <laughs> to put more bombs in it, or made the plane just a little bit shorter. It would have got farther a little faster. Yeah, I mean, they could. On. They could have put like at least five more planes if they didn't raise all me that space that, on the To me, the inside of the airplane, you know what it looked like? What? The Hello Carrier. The shield helicopter. Yes, I, I thought of that too. That's what it looked like. Maybe it's maybe, same designer. Maybe best because they they found that um carrier well, right? actually, and then they model after it. It's funny. I do say it's the same designer because we also know by watching Winter Soldier that Zoloft worked for Shield. Yes. So maybe Zoloft designed that. Helicopter. Yeah, maybe. It's, yeah, but you know they with never Shield, said we with, just uh, you know, with Stark technology. Yeah, with Stark technology. So like you know, during the fight scene with Captain America and all those you know Hydra soldiers or whatever they call. I like. I think one of my favorite is like he dropped the plate, and the guy was just hanging on the uh thing. Then he flew off. Do you remember that scene? I don't remember that scene. Like, oh yeah, on the airplane. Yes, I do remember it. Because when he when he kicked the deal, plus I also remember when he's on the airplane, he sends that guy through the propeller. Yes. You know what's amazing? It's like one of the guys made it right, and then Steve, the uh, Captain America, jumped on that plane just to stop it. Then flew that thing back inside the plane. <laughs> yeah, he flies the thing back in the plane, and then he starts looking for Red Skull. Yes. Which the plane apparently has good au- autopilot for the. Yeah. I guess it could. I mean, autopilot's probably a simple thing, especially if you've got a plane that looks like that. Yeah, but the thing is, keep it the simple. thing is about getting on the plane, because we forgot when he gets on the plane, remember? Because that's when Colonel Phillips shows up with that supercar and Peggy Carter's in the back. Yes. You know, remember? Oh, I'm remember so sorry. I skipped that part. I love that part. Of course. Part. Of course, Peggy Carter's got to kiss him while he's yep. trying to get on the airplane. Then he looks, and at, he the... looks at Colonel Phillips. <laughs> at that moment, Steve didn't know what to do because that was probably the first time he got kissed by a girl. Yeah. He looks course. at him like, I'm not kissing you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, Tommy Lee Jones was so great in this movie. <laughs> well, he's got that deadpan humor, you know? He does. Like, I'm not kissing you. Which also, we were also forgot to point out on that car, here's something I didn't really notice it at first. Yeah. There's a button on that car. You know, there's a button that makes the car go faster. Yeah, like a turbo button. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you remember, the, I think the button has a K on it. He's Agent K. Remember oh, the scene in Men in Black where he pushes, where he has that button that says, I do not, because I think it says in German, do not push this button. Oh, but he pushes, he pushes anyway, that button. Because remember the car? Remember he has that car, you push the button. Yeah, he, he doesn't push it. Yeah, don't push that button. They push it. They turn the car, turns into a rocket ship, yep. flies out of the tunnel in New York. Oh, so that's, that's funny. Much, that's, that's pretty much that same scene. In, in, uh, I, didn't in black. That. I didn't notice that almost at all either. Huh. I mean, I didn't until I watched it like, I don't know how many. It, it took me like the second time before we did this. Yeah. To notice. Hey, oh, I got to pay attention next time. I, yeah, because you almost don't notice. Well, you know you pushed this button, but you didn't think about it. Yeah, you didn't hey, think about it. It's just like, oh, it's, it, you know, you all these movies have a turbo button. Yeah, because all cars have it. But then it's like, oh, this is better black. <laughs> 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 but of course, he's fighting the Red Skull on the airplane. Yeah, and, and then, like, you know, it, it's, it's, it's like you said before, it's also, a, it's not a very long fight. Yeah, it wasn't that big a fight. I mean, because by that time, it doesn't have to be a long fight. What happened was like, you know, uh, Captain America threw the shield and then he broke the thing that uh, was holding the Tesseract. Yes. Because it came out and then it it, it created some kind of like a bridge, right? Well, it's a Tesseract, so I'm going to say it created a Tesseract. Okay. Well, it's Tesseract's a wormhole Mm -hmm. is what a Tesseract is. And that's where the West Skull went because it it sucked him in. He, He just went through that. Yeah, he went through a portal. Because actually, because you got to remember, that's the space stone that's inside the Tesseract. Yeah, so that's, I mean, like, that's, yeah. 
And this was the yeah, first time. was like, defeated. Like, oh, he, di- he, he died. Yeah. And like, well, I guess well, it's kind of his arrogance. He can handle that. He thought he could handle this, and it's no big deal. And then yeah. he just goes to the rift and goes to, I guess he goes, there's no telling. He tra- probably travels to space or he falls on Boromir. Yeah, he just, yeah. Uh, eventually, he eventually ends up on Boromir. We yep. find that. But anyhow, he goes through there, and then Captain America's got this giant airplane that can wipe out New, New York, so he's got to turn it. And yeah, crash he calls it them, and, like, you know, they already know that, like, he already made that decision. I'm going to take this plane down yeah. immediately. Yeah, and you know, it's funny. Him and Peggy used to keep talking, but you can see the other guys, like mainly Colonel Phillips, has the other guy get out of the room. Yeah, he already knows. He already, he already knows, knows he's not coming. He already knows he's not coming back. Yep. But I mean, like, of course, you know, Steve Rogers and Peggy, I guess, I guess Steve Rogers probably knows he's not coming back. Yo, he knew. But he I knew right away I think, when he said that. Well, I think there's a lot of, now. but I think there's like some hope there. Yeah. Because, you know, because she's making this date and he needs to be there. Yes. She's making that date just so they he's got to find his way. Well, yeah. so he could find, because I mean, Captain America, there's got to be one way that he'll survive. Yep. So it's yeah. good. Like it, all the way to the end, he crashes the plane. Yeah, crashes the plane in the ocean. That was really good. Yeah, it was kind of sad too. No, it was really sad. You yeah, know, because like she yeah. keep calling him, like she try to get him help, and he's like denying, like no, I gotta take this down now. Like yeah. the any more time we yeah. waste it, right? Yeah, he's like already it. heading to New York. But I like it that they made the date. Yep. Yeah, they make the date. Yep. Eight that's o'clock. Important. We'll have the band and, play something. And slow. after it crashes, yeah, and after it crashes, boom, where he wakes up on a bed. Ooh, now this is what I want to point out. Remember all these, uh, like, uh, let's call them loopholes, right? Like, that didn't make sense. So at that point, right, because we've already seen the movie, we already know that he know the baseball game was in May, whatever, 1941. Yeah, well, we didn't know that yet. No, we didn't know that yet, but he knew, yeah. okay? Yeah, And then knew. the people, the agents of SHIELD knew. So they knew their timeline, okay? They knew when that gigantic... Yeah, you're thing right. Okay, I get crash. you. Man. So now I'm thinking, like, they couldn't play something further into the future. <laughs> Yeah, they what? had to pick something like in 1941. They couldn't find a base. Yeah, that does that because they're supposed to know everything. And you know what? And you know what? They probably couldn't find a baseball game anyway. Oh, because there wasn't. Well, there was some games still going on. No, they could have played something from. Oh, there wasn't any games going on. Five, okay, like yeah, they could have played something. Forty-nine, but they had to pick something before he was even enrolled in the army. Yeah, I know that doesn't make sense. You're right. I forgot all about. Before, I didn't. I didn't think of that. Before they were attacked by the Japanese. Well, maybe they let the FBI do that, okay? <laughs> this is messed up. You know, the the shield up. operations, but they they let the FBI or or, or somebody else do like, take them. Who played this tape? Uh, I deserve. But here's also here's the also thing that kind of bugged me, okay? Because the girl goes in the room and she tries to calm him down. Yeah, she even dressed this, like the from the forties. Yeah, but here's the thing: when she panics, two shield agents come in. Yeah. And then that's the thing: they're not wearing old military gear they're wearing no. brand new and, and the thing is the brand new they're all wearing black and here's the funny thing about our military now we should point out or the, this police now from our time mm-hmm. they look like hydra agents oh they did yeah yes they did look like hydra agents i mean because what are you thinking you're back through this time and these two guys jump in here we know they're america and they're okay but to him he's looking at them and they're like oh my god two hydra yeah, agents. Look like hydra agents yeah so he threw them out <laughs> i mean come on our them. police force looks like military Hydra yeah. agents now. Yep, and then he just ran through the, I guess, the shield building. Yeah, he just run right out the shield building, no big deal. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this to the FBI building because yep. somebody had to make that mistake. I like he ran into the middle of Times Square. That was awesome. Yeah, because it's a New York building. Yeah, he runs out there and there's all, all this stuff. It's all like high updated technology. Like what the heck's going on? There's lights and stuff. Yeah, it seems like it's not <laughs> really that big a deal. It's not that big a deal to him. No, yeah. Of course, that's when we see Nick Fury again. Yes. Hey, and he tells him, "Hey, uh, you've been asleep for uh, seventy yeah, like years." Yeah, for seventy years, Cap. I'm sorry about that charades back there. You know, we want to, mm-hmm. you know, ease you in slowly, but apparently didn't. didn't work. Yeah, because yeah, we keep picked the baseball game from nineteen May, yeah, nineteen forty one. And of course, you had two goons jump out, a little like hydrate agent. Yeah, the girl was hot, by the way. <laughs> she was pretty. Yeah, but he's too busy thinking about Peggy. Yes. Oh, I remember, know. Dude, that's what he says. He goes, he goes. I'm sorry about this. He goes. Something wrong. Yeah, yeah, I had a date. That was really good, and that's yeah. how it ended. And that's how it ends. Boom. Oh, we forgot about the Steve. Um, not Steve. Stanley Cameo. How did you like that? Because okay. when he he was supposed to receive the medal, right? Yeah. Because yeah, remember, he was supposed people. to gone back to the United States, and he did. Yeah, and then he did it. That's Stanley Cameo. Like, so great. <laughs> like, yeah, I think he goes. Oh yeah, 
I thought you'd be taller. <laughs> That's, it's still the joke about how Steve Rogers is a little guy. And yeah. <laughs> got a big dude. I thought you'd be taller. Yep. And then uh, how you like the post credit scene? It just basically, he was, um, he's not with it with the time. Well, yeah, well, the post credit scene we get to see in the Avengers. Yes. Because remember, because all it does is shows him punching his punching bag, and then he punches it right off the deal. Because in then Thor, right him, before the post credit scene, it says Thor will be, uh, return in the Avengers. And right before this credit scene, it says Captain America will return in the Avengers. And then we get an Avengers. Uh, uh, yeah, a cut, yep. He needs him to life. save the world. Yeah, but that's when we see the punch bag. Plus, we see the punch bag scene in the Avengers movie. Yes. Which is, it shows a little bit more to it. Yeah, it does. So, so yeah, but, yep. So, that was it. That was it. So, uh, next week, we're going to do Avengers. All right? Yeah. I'm going to end it right here for uh, Captain America, the first Avenger. And next week, we're going to do, finally, the Avengers. The Avengers. Thank you for watching this segment of our review. I hope you had a great time listening to us. Be sure to subscribe and give us a thumbs up, and we'll see you on the next one. Laters.